August 4th, 1951. The eyes of the motorsports world turn to the Pacific Northwest. Location, Seattle's Lake Washington. Event, Seafair Race number one. Hydro Plains Gold Cup is the Super Bowl of boat racing. I grew up on Lake Washington, just north of Floating Bridge. The Seattle boats used to be pitted in Leshy, so the slum mows would be pitted in Leshy and come across. So I remember them as probably three years old, seeing the slum mows on Lake Washington. Today, 60 years after virtually unknown Seattle instantly went big time, Seafair is celebrating a milestone of Thunderboats and Rooster Tails. Dad's dad was actually here at the very first Gold Cup when uh, the slum was brought back out from Detroit. Our families have been involved in, and I'm honored, as Kaylee is honored, to be racing at this race, especially on the 60th anniversary. 60 years of racing translates into hundreds of boats, thousands of fans, and a countless number of memories. Today, you will journey down Hydro's memory lane while keeping an eye on the present and future. To have the opportunity to have this 60th race and be involved in it is an, is an honor in and of itself. Uh, if I could win it, well, that would just be icing on the cake. So fire up the grill, invite the family, friends, and neighbors, then get ready. This is Cairo 7's exclusive presentation of the 60th annual Hydroplane race in Seattle. It is Seafair time, and we're set to present the 2010 Albert Lee Cup. This is the Budweiser Startup Show, brought to you by Budweiser, the great American lager, by Beacon Plumbing. Stop freaking, call Beacon at 1-800-FREAKIN. Sunday morning on Lake Washington, but not just any morning. This is a Seafair Sunday morning. And just as they have for the past 60 years, fans will take to the shores and to the water to witness a spectacle unlike anywhere else in the world. Good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Russell. And I'm Steve Rabel welcoming you to the Budweiser Startup Show, high above the pits in that very tower right there. We will be with you here on Cairo 7 for at least eight hours today if everything goes well. Right. If it doesn't, we could be here till 10 o'clock tonight. Who knows? We have a great broadcast team assembled for you, as always, to bring you the stories and the festivities. 60th anniversary of hydroplane racing here in Seattle. And there are lots of stories to talk about. We'll detail them throughout the day for you. But maybe the biggest one is... In eight hours from now, who will be the champion of the Albert Lee Cup here at Seafair? That's right. You know, on paper, it should come down to just two teams. But in reality, it could be based really on a war of words after what came out of the races at, in the Tri-Cities. What's always fun about this day is nothing is ever done on paper. It's always <laughs> settled right. out here on the water and sometimes in the pits as well. Well, let's check in with our resident analyst here, our Hall of Fame, our Motorsports Hall of Fame member and six-time Seafair champion, Chip Hanauer, who will be joining us all day here on the tower. I'll be here. Chip, you will be here. I'll be here. Thank you. Well, Let's, <laughs> let's start with what happened a couple of weeks ago in Tri-Cities. Dave Vilwax, Steve David, no love lost. No love lost, and actually, Dave Vilwax screwed up. He had the race <laughs> one. He was the fastest qualifier. He had the fastest bow with one lap to go, with one corner to go. He made a miscalculation in what lane he was in. He came across Steve David in the Alberta boat, made him change lanes, although it didn't really inter here with Steve David, it's not legal. So he lost the race on the last corner of the, the last lap. Right, well, that's what happened on the course, but in the interviews after the races, that's when more drama started. Take a listen to what both of them had to say. He tried to kill me down in that far turn. I mean, he came in and there was no lane whatsoever, and I was either going to run him over or we were going to win this race. There was another boat on the outside. There was another boat that was dead in the water there someplace, and I'm supposed to try to avoid. And the sun's over there because we ran this thing at 450, not 420. He obviously never makes mistakes. You know, I mean, at some point you got to realize, okay, you screwed up, and congratulate the winner. Wow. So were they just blowing off a little steam, or do you think those were fighting words? No, competition does this to relationships. You know, what happens is these guys two or three years ago, they were great friends. It was all fun and games. Well, it's all fun and games until somebody loses a boat race, right? right. And uh, now, all of a sudden, these guys are at each other. There's a lot at stake here. There's, there couldn't be two more different personalities, not only on the race course, but off the race course. They are entirely different kind of individuals. I'll tell you, after covering this guy for so many years in in the cockpit as he was a racer, there was no one more focused. And at times, people thought maybe that you had a little bit of an edge to you. And look how you've mellowed over You with edge? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Uh, when I was racing, I took it so serious. I got so focused. Uh, 
it, competition does this. And, you know, we can talk about Paul Becker and Kaylee Perkins. They were great buddies until uh, last year, actually. And now after the Seafair race, there's a little animosity there as well. Well, let's talk about the team totals right now, because that's also going to be something we're going to look at, because that means so much into who continues racing to go to the Middle East, which is really the big carrot out there for all these teams, right? And the reason it's a big carrot is it's a lot of money, because these boats make about 15000 per race. But if they can be one of the 10 that go to Cutter, mm -hmm. they will make $125,000. So if you look at the uh, the standings here, the boats there in uh, the U13, the U25, and the U57, they are desperate to be one of the 10 boats to go to Cutter to cash in on that $125,000. All right, well, Chip's going to join us back here again in less than an hour. There are 14 races today, and he'll be here for all of the action. We can check in with Chris Francis, our can sports we? director. I think so, yes. <laughs> He's going to be at the pits all day, and uh, one of the teams he's watching is the defending champion, the U96 Spirit of Cutter. And I know we were talking with Chip earlier. There's been some debate over the pronunciation, whether it's Qatar or Cutter. But talking with Boeing officials, it is indeed Cutter. And I've always heard you say it that way, too. Cutter is what uh, what us newsies, as you know, like to yes. call it. But Chris is with the defending Chevy Cup champion from years past. And now he's hoping to be the champion of the Albert Lee Cup here at Seafair. Chris? He certainly is. Steve, and uh, just here signing autographs and stuff, and uh, nice enough to join us real quick for an interview here. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, Steve's is staying up in the booth defending champ, uh, and you had a great day yesterday, a great start to your run. It's a good start. You know, we needed to get points, and we got those. This one's going to be a lot harder. We're running from the complete outside again, so... Uh, but the weather looks good, water looks good, we're just going to let her fly. Yeah, it was a, li a little bit bumpy yesterday. I know that's what you said, and everybody said it looked easy. Uh, how do you, so how do you keep that going today? I know the first tee, yeah, you're, you're running on the outside. We just got to race our way in. You know, it's not a, we have to run very, very hard here, and hopefully we can get to the front. But probably unlikely, a lot of fast boats inside of us. So what we have to do is just do the best we can and try to start working our way and racing our way towards that inside lane again for the final. So... Just a lot of hard work today. We've been asking you about this rivalry all week long. This is what the fans want to see. You'll be in the first heat here. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tough job to overtaking your time. Your lap times were pretty much the same yesterday. Yeah, but we've been a little better in rough water, and I know their boat's a little flighty. So we'll see how it pans out when we get to the race course. We'll see how rough the race course gets. But it's hard to pass anybody on the, on the outside here in Seattle because of the rough water. So we'll just see. Take a good, good heavy swing at the bat and see what happens. I'm sure we'll uh, be watching you all day long, Steve. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks. Right. That's Dave Bilwalk. We'll be back to you, Steve. All right, Chris. Thanks very much. And we have our microphone problem, we believe fixed with uh, our Mike Fitzsimmons at the start finish line. So Mike, when we last chatted, we were talking about how the weather might affect the racing today. Seattle weather is always unpredictable, Steve. And uh, as a result, you never know what you're going to get. Now, as you uh, heard Rebecca say, we're not going to really see a whole lot of wind today. We're not going to see uh, a whole lot of, uh, of uh, chop on the water caused by the wind. But she did say this, toward the afternoon, the wind will pick up out of the southwest. Now, you don't need a lot of wind in that south turn, in turn number one, to cause the water to start chopping, chopping up and frothing up and leaving you rollers three and four feet uh, with big troughs in between. And when everybody goes charging into that corner, that is a dangerous turn. There's no getting around. And if you just get a 10 or 12 mile an hour wind from the start line to the to the uh, first turn, what happens is that right sponson, and especially at high speed as they're charging down on that first lap, the right sponson likes to lift. And when it lifts, if it catches just enough wind and catches a, a, a roller at the same time, you lift up above the horizon and there's no getting it back. So in these conditions, Mike, who do you think uh, would be would work best in this? Well, it, it's, it depends, Angela. There's a lot of different things that these uh, crews are doing, and this is a team sport. The driver himself is out there, or herself as the case may be, uh, attempting to uh, master these waters in the condition they find them. But the reality is that the crews are trying to set it up with the best possible boat ride. The key is get above it. Don't hit it and allow it to launch you away. Get above it to where you bounce over the top of it. They'll be working on that, but the conditions, obviously, is unlike uh, motor racing with wheels. The track changes virtually every lap around so we have to uh, uh, set the boat up in such a way that it's going to be able to handle almost anything we could expect in a in a three lap or five lap final as the case may be and uh, that being the case the uh, the crews will be adjusting wings looking at at, at uh, the ride of the uh, of the boat uh, the driver will be working the canards pretty much on this front straight away and any anything can happen but the weather is always a factor in Seattle even when it's really hot 
Mike, 40 years in this 425 with us here at Cairo 7. Go out on a limb for us. What do you think? Who wins today? Steve, this is a sport of ironies. If the last 60 years of Seafair haven't taught us that, then it hasn't taught us anything. I am looking at a driver who has actually, for the four races thus far this season, uh, this being the fourth, of course, has uh, let the race come to him in a way I haven't seen in a young driver in years. And this fellow does not have the fastest boat, but uh, but uh, J. Michael is, uh, in my view, the fellow who is going to be able to pull this off. You saw a move yesterday, and we'll show it to you when we run the, uh, run the heat, uh, in which he literally created a condition for himself, planted in advance, almost three-quarters of a lap in advance, and was able to take advantage of it. This guy is watching the other fellows thinking, how can I put myself in a position to win? So I'm going with J. Michael Kelly and an upset today. All right, Mike, thank you so much. We'll talk to you a little bit later. Now, a driver profile presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. Perhaps the most prominent driver currently on the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Circuit is Auburn, Washington native Dave Vilwak. Racing since 1992, Vilwak now drives the Spirit of Qatar, formerly known as the Miss Elam Plus. Vilwak has racked up 60 career victories, just three away from becoming the all-time winningest driver in unlimited hydroplane racing history. Last season, the Elam Plus was first in victories, but finished second overall in points behind the old boy Alberto Miss Madison. After a win at Seafair last year, Vilwak seeks to record yet another victory on Lake Washington. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. Welcome to the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair. It is time to go racing with unlimited heat. 1A, here is the rundown. The old boy Alberto, Steve David on the inside. Two straight driving championships. Greg Hopp has been fast in the Lay's Kettle Cooked Boat. Miss Albert Lee, Brian Perkins. The Miss Red Dot, Kip Brown. Nate Brown is the team owner there. The Spirit of Detroit, Miss Jillians. With Cal Phipps at the controls. And the Miss Peterson May, the rookie John Zimmerman behind the wheel. It's unlimited. Heat 1A. And the clouds have broken just a bit, but the drizzle continues here on Lake Washington as we get set to race. And Chip Hanauer, as we look at this list, Steve David has it pretty much the way he wants it, doesn't he? Not really. It's a big change here. Yesterday, uh, Greg Hopp in the Lace Kettle Corn really stepped up his speed. Steve David thought as long as he didn't draw Vilwak, he was flying. But now, all of a sudden, he's got his hands full of Greg Hopp. Pat O'Day, the big boats are back on the waters of Lake Washington. Olardo Berta just came by our start finish line tower passing out Pepperoni and Steve David wants to pass everybody and in his Alberto, he wants that national championship, but he better look out because Greg Hopp and Kit Brown are both looking quick. Mike Fitzjimmon and Mike Fitzsimmons will call it for us. Here they come around the top of the course now, Patrick, as they uh, are already established in terms of their lane. Steve David in the Alberto in lane one. The Lays boat with Greg Hopp in lane two. Albert Lee in lane three. The Red Dot in four with Kip Brown. The Julians with Cal Phipps and the Peterson May in the sixth lane. They come to the line. Looks like we're going to have a picture-perfect start here, Steve. David nails it as they come down to, to the first turn here with uh, plenty of speed. This was one of the better starts we've seen this year, Chip, and we've got a lot of traffic. Brian Perkins right there in the lane three. He really has got a lot of boat speed. I'm really amazed. That's the fastest I've seen that boat ever go. And they get them sorted out of the exit pin down there, and it's down the back chute. Steve David has got the lead, but it looks like the real battle is between Brian Perkins and Greg Hopp, who are side-by-side -side in second place and within the rooster tail of the old boy, Alberto. Now, as you know, Steve David has a slim lead of 370 points, national high points, and he did not pick uh, Dave Vilwak in this heat, so he had a chance to go up on him, depending upon what luck befalls Vilwak in the next heat, and he's trying to make sure he gets away clean with this one. At the end of lap number one, Steve David in the Oboy Alberto has got a very strong lead, and Greg Hopp is now being challenged by Kip Brown in the in the uh, 17 boat. And Dave turned the first lap at 142 one 142.051 for the first lap. Steve David out in front in the oh boy Alberto and in the points chase, but right behind him and still putting on the pressure is Greg Hopp. And then, uh, then uh, Brian Perkins in the Albert Lee is behind uh, those two in third place. And we've sort of uh, sorted this out now to a certain extent, but we still have some pressure on the outside from Kip Brown, who has now passed the Albert Lee going into the uh, 
turn number one, or turn number two, excuse me, the, the North Turner Bridge turn uh, in uh, a real hurry up there. Out of the corner comes the old boy Alberto. We got several of them bunched up there, and uh, our finish order in the second lap is going to be the old boy Alberto out front. Still Greg Hopp in the uh, in the Lay's Kettle Cooked is right in there, second place now, just now passing. It'll be Kip Brown driving the red dot as he comes by and on. Now there's a disabled U100 boat, the Kettle, uh, the uh, Lay's Kettle uh, looks like it got cooked and unfortunately he falls back to fourth place now as Stephen David running some rough water up the back chute has everything his way. Kip Brown has established second place and Chip it, uh, it looks like Kip Brown has got a lot of boat speed out there. A very surprising the boat speed he's showing and I also want to talk about that start. In the years past we've talked about boats fighting for lanes. These boats were assigned lanes by their qualifying speed. Back to you Mike. Yes they were and coming down to a pick up 400 points in a first place in heat 1A. It's going to be just the way he had planned it. Steve David in the old boy Oberto, about three rooster tails ahead of his nearest competition. And that's because his uh, earlier nearest competition broke this on this front straightaway. Across the line now comes Kip Brown. Very, very impressive run for Kip Brown in the red dot. Albert Lee comes across the line in third place with Brian Perkins. And finally getting the beams back again is the U100 Lays Kettle Cook. And uh, fourth place overall. Well, we got a little bit of a battle going, but it looks as though it's going to be John Zimmerman in the Peters and May, followed by the 13 boat Miss Jillians with Cal Phipps, who's had some mechanical difficulties out here getting qualified and getting in this race. All right, Steve, this actually, this turned into a race for second place pretty quickly. Did you mean this to be a statement race? We're really just trying to make the Alberto run better each time. We tried a different combination. It worked really well in this heat. The goal is to win this thing come time for the final, so we have to progress every heat, but certainly we'll take those 400 points and move on down the road. How about conditions? That's been the question of the day. We've had rain, we've had wind. Has it been affecting you guys while you're out there? Yeah, Seattle's always rough, so it's what you expect and you set up for it, so the conditions were perfect. And the Alberto loves this rough water. Yeah. This is a great start then for you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Steve, back to you. Uh, all right, Lee. And here are now the official results. Again, oh boy, Alberto and Steve David on top. The speed showed by the red dot. They pick up a second place. Lays Kettle cooked along with Peters and May, Miss Jillians, and the Miss Albert Lee appliance. We continue on limited racing with Heat 1B. Here is your lineup. The fastest boat on the water this weekend, Dave Billwalk, starts on the inside. Then Jeff Bernard in the FormulaBoats.com. J. Michael Kelly in the Graham Trucking Boat. Mark Evans is back in the race along with Mike Webster and Ken Muscatel in the U25 Car Pros. Could not get that boat going. It's unlimited Heat 1B. Cool cloud, a little chop on the water, but Chip Hanauer, the race here, in this particular heat, maybe between Jeff Bernard and J. Michael Kelly. This Formula Boat team is running three boats, and Jeff Bernard wants nothing more than to beat his teammate, J. Michael Kelly. I think we're going to really focus on that second place race between those teammates. Pat Dave Vilwak, 10 time winner here in Seattle, wants to win it again. And he's got crosshairs on his back. These guys want to get him. There's three red boats. One has a bird on the tail, the other has a football sized Graham trucking sign. Helping you separate those boats. Mike Fitzsimmons, <laughs> it's your call. Three boats from Indiana in there with the spirit of Cutter, and that's, of course, the 96 boat. There are three former Seafair winners here on these waters in this competition, and uh, Dave Vilwalk is one of them. So is Mark Evans, two of them in this heat. As they come around, of course, the starting positions are predicated on the qualifying speeds, and that's what put the 96 boat inside the spirit of Cutter. And Dave Vilwalk has got a good head of steam coming down here to the line. We're going to have a perfect start here leading him across the line that was J. Michael Kelly in the Graham trucking at an absolutely picture perfect start in the three lane as they come across both he and Jeff Bernard along with uh, Dave Vilwaka rocketing through that first turn chip Dave Vilwaka has phenomenal speed he does but watch these two boats here those are the two teammates we talked about Jeff Bernard out qualified him by a little bit so he's got the inside lane but watch how fast J. Michael Kelly's working on that outside. Now you're seeing the spirit of Cutter up the back shoot and the boat seems to have a lot of air underneath it and if you think that's the case you're exactly right that's the way Dave Vilwalk likes to uh, drive this boat he likes to fly it the least amount of wetter surface equals the least amount of drag and the faster the boat will go and there's no question about it but this one is the class of the fleet when it comes to speed in second place among the Reds it is Jeff Bernard 
and in the, the uh, five boat with formula boats.com followed by j michael kelly in the graham trucking in that order and uh, their teammate mark uh, evans is in fourth place right now in the washington truck dispatch followed by the matrix system boat that's mike webster out of pennsylvania boy j michael kelly right there made a crossover move he went over jeff bernard's weight to get inside of him and if jeff bernard doesn't know he's there his radio team should tell him that j michael kelly still has got a chance there on that inside to get him and I think this is gonna be a good boat race oh when he got a little loose there we saw an awful lot of the underside of that race boat for J Michael Kelly for a moment there as he took that inside lane he's fighting a little slop from the wake of his teammate meanwhile staying out in front of it all and attempting to get 400 points and stay even with Stephen David as far as the point spread is concerned in national points that is the spirit of cutter and that is Dave Vilwatt coming across the line first place second place it's Jeff Bernard third place now by a rooster tail and a half it is the Graham trucking and J. Michael Kelly and uh, in fourth place still way back of a half a, a straight away away from or a half course I should say away from the a lead boat that would be Mark Evans. It'd be interesting to know if Jeff Bernard did not pull in a lane in that floating bridge turn because Kelly was coming up on the inside yep. and suddenly Kelly had to go through his rooster tail. I think he changed lanes he, but we'll see what the referee says. It was a little say. tight up there but one thing's for sure if you are not to uh, having to entertain a crowd you can do things your own way and that's exactly what's uh, what uh, Dave Vilwak is about to demonstrate as he comes down to eye the checkered flag and win heat 1B of the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair and the uh, spirit of cutter across the line with the flag second place Jeff Bernard he comes across the line about three rooster tails back of the spirit of cutter and in third place about by the same distance it would be the uh, Graham trucking and Vilwak turned a quick lap in that first Got time around 145 834 we have a we have a penalty on Bernard just as you observed uh, there uh, Mr. O'Day it appears as though he did not give a sufficient overlap and that means his teammate picks up second place I that would be so. the, that would be the uh, Graham trucking so uh, and this by the way chip is the, is the kind of racing that we've been seeing from J Michael Kelly put on the pressure yeah. make sure you make somebody make a mistake but make sure you're safe in the process that's just what he did I mean Jay, big J Michael Kelly fan remember we pointed out that that would look like it could happen J Michael Kelly did the crossover I hope he maybe we can show it to you again did the crossover got inside of him made up ground uh, Jeff Bernard panicked and cut him off and it didn't cost him dearly and you know those two guys don't exactly love each other they're on the same team but they're not too sure they're fair and sharing the props and this and that and the other day and this will just heat the controversy up a little bit Pat, let me show you what made this happen. You're going to see this boat right here in third place. That's J. Michael Kelly do a crossover. He's going to cross his wake. He sees a lane in there. Now he hopes he has good water. He's going to try and run up inside of Jeff Bernard. It looks like a long way. Now we go up to the corner, the final corner, and right here you'll see Jeff Bernard, where now he's supposed to leave him a lane, and he doesn't do it. He goes right to the buoy, and then he leaves no place for J. Michael Kelly to go. That's an infraction. Dave, Bill walking, uh, we waited most of the day to get it done, but uh, pretty easy for you there. Yeah, it was a lot tougher than it looked. Uh, it was real rough. The thing was trying to swap ends up on the other end. It was in a couple of troughs, but managed to get it lit and, and uh, get it to the starting line. It looks like, like Jay Michael or somebody had a tough time up here. Probably, it's got some big ruts out there that were causing some problems. All right, the, the only uh, drawback, you didn't get uh, Steve David in the, in the draw, so maybe next time. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. It just pays our money and takes our chances. <laughs> All right, Steve, back to you. So here now the official results. Unlimited Heat 1B. And Dave Vilwak, of course, taking the win. Graham Trucking followed by Washington Truck Dispatch, Matrix, Formula Boats, and the Car Pros boat did not start. And we're getting set to go racing for real for live here on this Sunday morning with the two fastest boats in the same heat. Heat 2A coming your way shortly. Here at the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair.
preparing Steve right now. They're putting the final touches in, getting the boat in the water. This is his second run of the day. He took the boat out uh, a little while ago just to test the waters and to test some changes that the crew is only terming at this point special sauce. They're not really cluing Steve into some of those changes that they had made before the run because they didn't want him to overthink it. They want to keep it simple for the driver, and Steve says that he really appreciates that the crew does that for him. So they're just putting him into position right now. He says he is not taking any of these heats or any of the races for granted. He knows that every single one of them counts, but he's going to get a, t a look at the conditions for today as well. That was a real issue yesterday. The rain, the wind, it seems it's all back today. He says he's not concerned about it, that actually the choppy water is what the Oberter likes to run in. So he's actually excited to get out there and really give it a spin. Back to you. All right, Lee, who will be following things in the pits along with our Chris Francis down there. The change, the lanes, the lane assignments today, as opposed to yesterday, easy going, Chip, yesterday. Today, not so easy. Well, first, let's go back to years past where they fought for the lanes. Now they're assigned lanes in the first heat by qualifying speed. But this heat is very special because they're reversing the order of finish from the second heat. So now Dave Vilwak is on the far outside, and just to his inside is Steve David and Alberto. This is the race that Steve, Bur Steve David in the Alberto has to beat Dave Vilwak to have any chance of getting that inside lane for the final. Mike Fitzsimmons at the start finish line. You'll be calling the race. What do you see out of this, that competition, those two guys where they have to come from outside in to try to win this heat? Well, Chip pretty well stated that if uh, Steve David doesn't do it here, he isn't going to do it. It is as simple as that. He has to uh, control this heat if it's at all possible to do so. He's going to have a faster boat. And I mean, this boat has been five miles an hour faster uh, all uh, week long out here in qualifying and uh, in its uh, initial heats yesterday. Bay. The uh, Spirit of Cutter is a faster boat, and he's going to take a larger race course, and he has to be able to drive around the old boy Alberto before he can shorten the size of the race course uh, that he's going to run. And, Pat, that simply means that Steve David either has it or he doesn't. Well, clouds and all, this is setting up to be one of the great heats of racing of the year. Yes, the uh, Qatar is a little bit faster than Steve David and the Alberto, but Steve's got the inside lane. This is such a critical heat from him as you look at the entire season as one big picture. And don't ignore the rest of the traffic. They can play a role in the, especially into the first turn as to how this one shapes up. J. Michael Kelly, your selection will be in the pack there somewhere. Well, as a matter of fact, let's head down to the pitch right now and talk about at least one of those other boats that may be in the mix. Anything can happen, as we know, out here on Hydro Sunday. Chris Francis is near the Graham Trucking Pits. Chris. Yes, Steve, I have actually all three boats, uh, Spirit of Cutter here and the U-17 and also J. Michael Kelly's boat as well, and they're all getting ready here down in the pits. And uh, I spoke with Dave Vilwak. Obviously, we spoke with him an hour ago on the air, but I spoke with him after that and just asked him what it's going to be like to run on the outside. And he said, you know, I know this race course. I'm going to be good in rough water, which he's going to see. And, yeah, it's just a matter of time if he can keep his boat where he wants it on the outside before he gets by uh, Steve David. So he, he's not really worried about being on the outside because, of course, He's got that faster boat, faster than almost anybody out here. But uh, keep an eye on, on Kip Brown because he's uh, he was very fast uh, yesterday in some of the heats. And uh, so he is uh, maybe a dark horse in this one. But uh, they look like they're all ready to go here. And uh, and especially uh, Dave Vilwalk on that outside. Now, a driver profile presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. At the controls of the U-100 is powerboat racing veteran Greg Hopp. This Snohomish native has raced boats since he was only nine years old. Most recently, Hopp became the driver for the Leland Unlimited team after the legendary Chip Hanauer retired in the year 1999. Hopp captured Rookie of the Year honors that season, but he is still seeking his first career victory on the Unlimited circuit. Behind the wheel of an unlimited light, however, has been a totally different story. His 20 victories on the unlimited light circuit make him the winningest driver in the history of that class. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. say we go racing heat 2a for the unlimited boats here on lake washington here are your headlines this is where the battle is joined it begins now the alberto and the cutter boats they're on the water what about the graham trucking boat fast and hungry let's see how they measure up and 
The Red Dot Boat, they've got some speed today. Can they compete? We'll see. It's the Unlimited Heats 2A. And here are your Muckleshoot starting lineups for this Heat 2A. The Miss Albert Lee, Peters and May, Red Dot, Graham Trucking, and there to the outside, the Oak Boy Alberto, and then the fastest boat on the court, of course, the Spirit of Cutter. Speaking of the course, as we take a look at the waters, again, a gray, kind of lumpy day out there, but the boats are out. They're getting set. Chilly 66, but the wind's not kicking up too badly as we head off to check out the drivers at the controls of the fastest boats on the water. And here you go, the Albert Lee Perkins boat, the U-21 with Brian Perkins at the controls, Mike. And uh, Brian's going to have to show something here. He only got 169 points in competition yesterday. He needs to uh, step it up because his performance was not strong. In the Peters and May boat, John Zimmerman, the rookie, and Chip, uh, the adrenaline's kind of going a little bit in him, I would think. It is, but he's really got a short sword here. This boat was leased from Fred Leland to replace the boat that was damaged in Detroit when Gabe W. Myers hit the wall. He doesn't really stand much of a chance here. Nate Brown's team with his nephew Kip Grant Brown at the controls, the Miss Red Dot. Mike, they showed some speed yesterday. We didn't know they had. They did, and he'll be starting from the middle of the pack also, so he will be a factor on this start. Watch where that yellow, uh, red, and blue boat goes. J. Michael Kelly, Mike Fitzsimmons, not so dark horse, Chip. You know, not so dark horse, especially from yesterday. I think this is one of the most gifted drivers I've ever seen. He pulled a great move yesterday to get, give him a second place. He's one to watch, not only in this heat, but all day long. I don't know how much more we can say about the Alberto team and Steve David, other than that they're the defending driving champs. And Mike, they need to get points because they're competing head to head with Cutter. Absolutely, the monkey's on this boat's back and Steve David's back. Uh, he has basically taken a hit on 17 on the blackjack table. Lee Stoll, the sausage boat is out on the water. Steve David, a confident driver. He's not expecting that big lead that he had in the heat yesterday. The crew is saying that he's expecting this to be a tight packed race. Not only what he does right, but also watching out for the other drivers and of course, keeping his eye on the spirit of Cutter. And that's the boat just to his outside. The defending champ here at Seafair, Dave Vilwan. You know, there's a national championship at stake. Dave Vilwak is behind because of some mistakes he made. He needs to beat Oberto every time he gets them so he can win that national championship that will come to a conclusion in Cutter. Chris Francis, the fastest boat on the course. There's no question that's got, a got a confident uh, driver here in Dave Vilwak, just like Steve David. And as a matter of fact, uh, I've got a prediction here of two laps from one of the crew members here uh, before he overtakes Steve David, guys. All right, Pat, here they come, the big boys. Steve David, if he's going to win the national championship again, the place is Lake Washington. The time is now. He needs to win this heat. Mike Fitzsimmons calls him. As they come to the line, Pat, we've 10 seconds left on the clock. And, of course, the guys to watch are on the outside. But the fellows in the middle, uh, J. Michael Kelly and Kip Brown, are going to control this start to some extent. We hit the line a little late, but they are at uh, the front end of uh, that fleet as they come through. You're watching them in the middle of your screen. And uh, right now, uh, Dave Vilwak is way outside and hanging back, just waiting to see how this lower corner sorts out. Chip, Mike, if that was either a perfect start or J. Michael Kelly jumped the gun, it is going to be very, very close. If he didn't jump the gun, that was perfect. And up the back shoot now, we have uh, J. J. Michael Kelly running out front at this point, along with Kip Brown to the outside of him and trying to drive around boats that are not quite as fast, but fast enough to cause a problem. That is Steve David in the Old Boy Alberto, and you're seeing that we've got foggy conditions on the race uh, course at this time. Peters and May, which uh, went down at the uh, first corner, has gotten restarted. Across the line, Kip Brown will lead them with uh, J. Michael Kelly in second place, and in the, the outside lane we've got Steve David in the old boy Alberto and here comes very strong from the far outside the spirit of cutter and Dave Vilwak as they come into the corner lots of convergence into that turn but uh, Kip Brown's getting a great boat ride out there in this uh, rough water and he's running very well inside uh, as they pass by the uh, U-21 boat there the Albert Lee up the back shoot now and uh, let's uh, let's check out how this continues to sort out the Albert Lee putting on the pressure from the inside and Kip Brown, and that's the uh, view from the Albert Lee as we look right out the window and see exactly uh, what Brian Perkins is seeing as they come out of this corner. Lots of traffic. 
Mike Kip Brown has gotten a penalty is going to have to go another time around and that leaves uh, the uh, the lead now at this point uh, to the uh, Graham trucking boat. Mike, I think the big story here is now what's going on up front, which is a great bow race. But Dave Vilwak is back in, what, fourth or fifth place. This means a lot with regard to the national championship and lane pick as we go through the day today. He's in physical fourth place. But, of course, uh, the uh, the boat that leads uh, the, gray, uh, the green boat, green and white, uh, Paddle Day, is actually penalized. He's not... He, he's not really the, the leader, but here we have J. Michael Kelly taking advantage of the situation from the middle of the race course. He's going to get a checkered flag if he can hold it, but right now Stephen David is putting the pressure on him. The quickest lap so far has been 139. That was the first time around. In these waters, that's flying. Mike, nope. this, you know, J. Michael Kelly, as we've been touting all weekend long, has driven great. He did a great move yesterday. That was a perfect start, and look what it results in. And what it results in is 400 points because J. Michael Kelly in the Graham Trucking takes the checkered flag in this heat 2A. To a, to a. And uh, Stephen David will take second place, but as you mentioned earlier on, the spirit of Cutter just didn't seem to have the ability to catch these guys from the outside. Whether that was deliberate, I doubt it was, because the points that have to be given up uh, because of that outcome are simply uh, not going to be acceptable. Now, we know Kip Brown was penalized a lot, but are you sure that the Albert Lee appliance was also uh, Brian Perkins? I'm not sure that Brian, Brian Kip was the only one that Brian was, uh, would be your winner if he wasn't, uh, if he didn't jump the gun, and the Graham trucking with Brian with uh, J. Michael Kelly would be second. Thank you for sorting that out, and you're correct about that. Physically, that was the case. I confused those two boats. It was Kip who was in the trouble, but not Brian, uh, and uh, Brian physically finished uh, across the line first. I tell you, nobody could have predicted this heat. This was an amazing heat, and it's going to have ramifications not only for today because now points are or i'm sorry lanes are assigned by point totals it's going to have big ramifications for the national title so this one heat as pat said going into it might be the most important heat of the season Our chris francis is getting into position he'll have brian perkins here in just a moment the pilot of the albert lee boat but in the meantime let's talk to Steve David, he's with our Lee Stoll. All right, Steve, I know you're pulling the uh, cords out of your ears right now, so we'll try and make this easy for you. You put the thumbs up as you pulled in. Was that a good race for you, considering how far back you en you ended up? Well, we uh, needed to head to Dave Hillwalk for our national points championship race, so that was really, have Jimmy check that here, that was really the purpose of that heat, was to beat him in points, and we did. So it increased our national championship lead, and then we'll worry about winning the race at the final. So at this race, it really wasn't looking at the final of it, you were looking where Cutter was. It, exactly, because he and I are really in the points race at this point, we had to beat him, we did that. Uh, guys on the inside had a great race, there was no chance we were going to get them from way out where we were. Tight, packed turns right there, pretty close racing. Oh, exciting stuff. Is that how you like it? Oh, I love it. And Alberto just eats that stuff up. The boat's set up for it. All right, let's toss it to Chris Francis, who has the winner. All right, thanks, Lee. A lot of hugs and uh, you know, very big smiles. And I'm with the winner here. And uh, boy, one of your guys just came up and said you ran with the big dogs, and, and that was a little upset there. Yeah, a little bit. You know, we had position on them there at that uh, in being in lane one. And uh, the Albert Lee team has done an amazing job setting up this boat. We've had a hard time uh, earlier this weekend with handling and stuff like that, but we tried a bunch of things this morning and it worked really well. Uh, and we really needed that uh, first place points right there to get in the finals, so that was huge. Yeah, and there was some question of a penalty there. You didn't know what was going on, or all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, they erupted here with the cheers and the, and the clapping. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, I was legal on the start, and, and I know that a uh, few boats were really close, and they said a couple boats jump. Um, I don't know if there were any other penalties uh, other than that, but uh, just an amazing win here for the Albert Lee team and uh, glad to do it for Albert. A little Perkins weekend going on here, I guess. <laughs> so huh? far, so good, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, back to you in the booth. Chris Man, Francis, I mean, I'm sorry, Chris Francis is with J. Michael Kelly. Let's uh, let's check with him right now. Uh, I am Steve, and uh, boy, what a start. And I know you couldn't get the Albert Lee there at the end, but that was a quick start, and you, and you got to run pretty good. Oh, man, what a great race. Uh, keep uh, Oberto and Guitar Boat behind us. Um, you know, that just shows uh, how much everybody else has come through. And, uh, you know, as of right now, I think anybody can win this race. Yeah, I mean, it really I mean, does. I mean, it jumbles it up here. I mean, yeah, the guys in the booth are talking about, wow, what, what a final we could have. What are your thoughts on how your boat can fit in all that mix there? Oh, I mean, my ride out there showed me that if I can get an inside lane, I can beat anybody. Uh, these Graham Trucking guys uh, have given me an absolutely amazing boat, um, and we just continue to get faster and faster. So, you know, I don't know where the, how the points uh, work out right now, but if 
the further we get inside, the better shot we're going to have in that final. All right, J-Muck, a lot of racing to go. Good yeah, luck to you. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank okay, you. Okay, guys, back to you. Well, we know the young man can drive. He won at Dohar last year. And here are your unofficial results with the Miss Albert Lee winning E 2A, the Graham Trucking. Oh, boy, Alberto comes in and picks up some points over the spirit of Cutter. Peters and May and the Miss Red Dot there bringing up the rear. That the results of Unlimited Heat 2A. Now, a driver profile presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. Another Northwest native racing in this year's Albert Lee Cup is J. Michael Kelly. J. Michael was Rookie of the Year in 2004. This is his seventh unlimited season and his second year with the U7 Graham trucking team. In 2009, J. Michael Kelly captured his first career victory at the inaugural World Cup Championship in Doha, Qatar. Other highlights include a second place finish behind teammate Jeff Bernard at the Thunder on the Ohio race in Evansville, Indiana. When not racing for Graham Trucking, J. Michael Kelly is a Finnish carpenter in his hometown of Puyallup. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. We're ready to go racing again. Heat 2B for the Unlimiteds here on Lake Washington. Here are the headlines for this one. Greg Hopp in the U100. He had a fast Heat 1. Can he do it again in Heat 2B? We'll see. The three formula boats are racing today, led by young Mr. Bernard. Let's see how the red boats do. And the flying doctor, Ken Muscatel. Does he use tape and glue and paper clips to hold together that boat? The U-25 will find out. These are the stories in Heat to be. Taking a look at the boats here in Heat 2B for the Unlimited, the Miss Jillian's FormulaBoats.com, Washington Truck Dispatch, Matrix, Lays kettle cooked, and there's car pros on the outside. Ken Muscatel's boat. As we look out at the water again, a little bit lumpier than a few moments ago, and now those clouds are really starting to drop down low to the deck. We'll keep an eye on that. Winds, however, staying at about four miles an hour. Let's check in on the drivers who will be controlling these fast boats in not such great conditions. The top of the list, the Miss Jillian's Cal Phipps leading the way, Mike. Cal's had a disappointing weekend. His boat has not been performing well. He got a couple of fast laps out of it, but mostly he's had mechanical gremlins. Hopefully, they're gone and he's ready to go. The U5 Formula Boat.com with Jeff Bernard at the controls just yesterday penalized, Chip. Last year, Jeff Bernard was kind of the first string driver for the Formula Boats team. J. Michael Kelly has kind of stepped into that first string. Jeff Bernard is not happy about it. He needs to make a statement here. Chris Francis in the pits. Are they ready to make that statement, Chris? Uh, I think they are. They are still actually in awe of what just happened in that last heat. And they uh, are buoyed, no pun intended, by the confidence they have uh, from what J. Michael Kelly did. So they'll be inside. And uh, Jeff Bernard, uh, you mentioned the penalty in the last heat. Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen to him this time and, uh, and puts on a good show here. The truck dispatch, the U57, a former champion here in Seattle, Mark Evans. It sure is nice to see Mark Evans back. Uh, his name, the Evans family name, figures so much into Seafair history. And uh, to have Mark back in the saddle after a serious back injury and uh, having come back to unlimited hydroplane racing, same old personality, just bubbling over all the time, no matter what he drives. Matrix system boat hasn't shown a whole lot, but Mike Webster, a young driver, the rookie of the year a year ago, Chip. This is a total family operation. Uh, uh, father and son put this boat together. Mike is just trying to demonstrate his ability as a driver. They know they really can't do much damage with this boat. I'm pulling for the uh, Lay's kettle cook because, Mike, they just sent up some potato chips up here to the booth. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good choice anyway, though. At Detroit, this boat was very fast. At Tri-Cities, not so fast. Here, seems to have found the speed again. He's coming from the outside, though, on the start. So this will be interesting to see if he hooks up with uh, the Formula Boats uh, out of that first corner. Dr. Ken Muscatel tore that boat up a couple of weeks ago in Tri-Cities, but Chip, he's got it back together again. Ken Muscatel was the guy that really put the cutter deal together. He desperately wants to get back, but that damage that he incurred in Tri-Cities just got fixed. This is his first hit heat of the Albert Lee Cup. Uh, I don't think he's going to make it to cutter no matter what he does here. Lee, they've been working hard on that boat all morning. 
That boat slept was... in 48. Some of the crew telling me they hadn't slept in 48 hours trying to put this boat back together. The duct tape was still going on it as they were pulling away from the dock. So to say that Ken and the crew are anxious for this heat is an understatement. And with a welcome to all the listeners on 950 KJR and worldwide at CairoTV.com. Pat O'Day, the floor is yours. Well, when the helicopter shot comes up for you watching on television, look at the number two lane, which is Jeff Bernard, probably the quickest boat out there. But out in the number five lane will be Greg Hopp in the Lays uh, kettle cooker, the U-100. Those are the two quickest ones, and they should be able to stage quite a battle here in Heat 2A or 2B. They come around with 20 seconds left on the clock. Cal Phipps will have the inside lane, but not the advantage as far as horsepower is concerned. The advantage clearly from lane two is going to be Jeff Bernard in the Formula Boats, but let's watch the 100 coming from the five lane on the outside, and he's going to come on strong as well. We're a little early at the line. One second. Uh, we're perhaps okay if so. Jeff Bernard was right there when he had to be. Uh, well, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a fudge there. It looks like we may be okay as far as the start is concerned. Into the first corner, it is Jeff Bernard taking control of things from the two lane as anticipated. Cal Phipps got sideways a, a little bit, is having trouble controlling his boat from the inside lane there. They're running through some troughs, and out front goes Jeff Bernard. But here on the outside, far outside, here comes the uh, latest kettle cooked with Greg Hopp starting to put the pressure on from the outside as they head up into the uh, upper corner now the uh, floating bridge turn and even Cal Phipps is starting to see some boat speed from the inside lane so we've got some uh, pretty good action up there coming out of that corner now and uh, shutting the door but that would be Jeff Bernard in the formula boat.com and he's got a rooster tail lead but Greg Hopp is still trying to catch up with him and chip I think Greg has a little bit more boat speed but he's got a lot of real estate to make up another example of a great start I think he just equal J Michael Kelly Kelly's great start and look at the benefit that that's paying off and I think with the start he made and the performance he's got on the boat I think he's going to keep Greg Hopp behind him. It looks that, as though at least at this point he's going to be able to do that but Hopp has made up a little bit of ground coming out of that corner very rough down in the lower corner now as uh, Jeff Bernard continues to uh, fly his boat down the back chute and uh, takes the uh, entrance pin now just about to the entrance pin of the north corner right, right now on the outside. It is uh, Greg Hopp putting a lot more pressure on him and uh, laying a little more horsepower through the corner here, trying to catch up. He has pulled it uh, within the rooster tail. Coming out of that corner now, he still has a wider course and clean water to run in, but uh, Greg Hopp is uh, not really catching him. He's just staying with him at this point. End of lap number two, Jeff Bernard has your lead now. He's, here comes Greg. He's, he's coming on now. strong now. He's coming on strong from the outside. He's drawing to within about a half a rooster tail now, about a quarter of a rooster tail. He's pulling as you can see from the outside uh, to uh, the apex of the corner and let's see if he's got the boat speed coming out he's got good water to run in Mike he left a lot of room I don't understand why he went so wide I think if he would have stayed closer to him closer to the inside he could have won this race but he went awfully wide on that corner and I think it's going to cost him he's easy. still putting the pressure on though as they come back into that north turn turn number two he's now alongside he noses out ahead at this point but he's going to have a drag race on his hands to try to get Jeff Bernard at the start finish line question is who has the most horsepower he's pulled virtually side by side he's coming on strong it looks like Greg Hopp may have it it does look as though he has it he wow. wins, takes the checkered flag just by a boat link there at the end over Jeff Bernard where did Fred Leland get this boat going so fast all of a sudden they've been struggling not only this year but they've been struggling for the last few years but all of a sudden this weekend they're fast. Boy, was that a finish. The number three of the boat is Cal Phipps. The number four is Ken Muscatel in the Car Pro. Uh, Mark Evans will be number five, and uh, number six will be the Matrix out of Pennsylvania. And that last lap for uh, the U100, the uh, the uh, kettle, uh, the Lays uh, kettle cooked was uh, 141 miles an hour in rough water. That's fast. And on the outside. And on the outside to boot. Yes, that's fast. Well, there was some dandy racing, and that shows you, of course, Chip, just exactly what's happening with the so-called Tier 2 boats, which are becoming quite a story here. Well, Mike and Pat, I don't know about you, but 
this day is starting to unfold a lot differently than I thought it would. I thought really Alberto and, and the cutter belt were just simply going to uh, walk away with it. But if we can see that start from the buoy again, I think we can really show what a start does for you. And, you know, both these drivers for Formula, Jeff Bernard and uh, J. Michael Kelly, I think they're upping each other's game because they both want to be the first string driver on that team. And I think they're pushing each other to really great driving performances. Well, that was certainly a great driving performance on the part of Greg Hopp. He just kept coming and coming. He's been out here so many years. He's tried so hard. Rarely has he had a piece of equipment underneath him like he has this morning. You know what? I tend to talk, I tend to talk a lot about the starts because I look at a driver separate from his boat. And the driver's job is to get a fast start to be on time and get through the corner well. If he gets passed on the outside by a boat that's faster than him, there's really nothing he can do about that. So when I see a guy like Jeff Bernard get a start like that and hold off a faster boat for all but the last half of the straightaway, that tells me it's a great driving job. But of course, also, we are now sprint racing, uh, obviously, with three laps and these very, very fast turbines. These have become sprint races. If you had four or five more laps to go, or the old days, if you ran uh, around 10 times for a 30-mile heat, things can change in that process. A lot of mechanical factors start to kick in. But right now, if you've got the bullet to go, and the three laps is all, it, uh, all it's going to take, uh, if you can get the position and manage to hold it for uh, at least a half of those three laps, your chances of winning are pretty good. And Chip, let me ask a question. We have seen Greg Hopp in years past running both, running the big boat and running the lights. Is this an advantage for the driver to be able to just focus on one thing? It certainly would be for me. I would not have wanted to drive two. I compliment Greg. He's done a great job of that, but I wouldn't want to do that. You know, again, if we can take a look at that start, um, I think it really demonstrates what a driver brings to the uh, to, to the sport here. Now watch that clock and watch when that boat goes past these two buoys. There's two seconds, one second, zero. Yeah, he was a little later than I thought, but try to imagine at home timing a boat, a 6,000 pound boat going 190 miles an hour and try to get it that close to a specific spot at a specific time. Um, I apologize, that spark, start wasn't as good as uh, J. Michael Kelly's, but still better than everybody else in that heat. Well, and you can see here from our camera shot high above the pits, Chris oh, Francis yeah. is now standing by. He's got Greg Hopp as Greg gets uh, untangled and undone. He's all set as the unofficial winner of Heat 2B. Chris? Well, Steve, I talked to him before the race, and he said, I got to produce. We just got this new sponsor, and you did it. That's right. We got this new sponsor, Lays uh, Kettle Cook. Kettle. <laughs> He's your reason. Kettle Cook Chips. And uh, I was just saying that we got to produce so they can sell some produce. So uh, everyone go out and buy a bag of kettles, cook <laughs> chips, and uh, we'll be all good. How did you hunt him down at the last couple laps? Well, I talked to you before the heat, and I remember, and so we were drew lane four. We put a, a really tall gearbox in it. Just a ton of boat speed coming from the outside. All right. Thanks, Greg. Guys, back to you. Taking a look now, your unofficial results. There is the Lay's Kettle Cook boat, the U100 Formula Boats, Miss Jillian's Car Pros the Washington Truck Dispatch, and the Matrix System. Unofficial results of Unlimited Heat 2B. From air show action back to the water, it's time for Heat 3A of the Unlimited Hydroplanes at Seafair. And here are your headlines. How hot's the kettle? Greg Hopp has that baby flying. What is he going to do here in Heat 3A? A third place finish is not what the Alberto team likes, but they stayed ahead of the cutter boat, and that's all Steve David wants to do. And finally, a family reunion of sorts, the red dot with Kip Brown at the controls and Uncle Nate running the show. How will they fare? It's Unlimited Heat 3A. Heat 3A of the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Samsung Appliance, a leader in innovative, energy-efficient appliances, and is presented for Seafair by the Tulalip Resort Casino. Experience exceptional luxury and service, plus gaming excitement at the Northwest's finest resort casino. And here now your Muckleshoot lineups for this Heat 3A. The old boy Alberto draws the inside lane here. There is Greg Hopp next to him, the Lay's Kettle Cook. Washington Truck Dispatch, the Miss Red Dot, Kip Brown, Matrix System, Systems, and then Car Pros with Dr. Ken Muscatel on the outside. 
And as we take a look with a little extra time to chat about the drivers and the boats and the conditions, again, we appear to be, our ceiling appears to be going up ever so slightly and ever so slowly. The temperatures aren't, though, still about 66 degrees and a, a little more breeze blowing here along the shores of Lake Washington. As we get set to run this race, let's check in now with the drivers, those men who will be controlling these boats. And here is inside the Lay's kettle boat with Greg Hopp at the controls and Mike Greg Hopp, a first place finish in his second heat. And he'll be starting from the two lane and he loves the two lane on Lake Washington. So this will be an optimum position for him and a good opportunity to really put it to the old boy Alberto will be just to his left on the inside. I think Greg Hopp is up to it. Chris Francis has been in the hop pits for the last little bit. How are they feeling down there, Chris? Uh, they're feeling really good. You're right, Steve. Uh, actually, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk about it before the first heat because we really weren't focused on Greg Hop, but they've changed engines a couple of times. They've gone back and forth all weekend here and changed gearboxes uh, before today's heat. So uh, they've obviously dialed in on something that they really like. Uh, but I did talk to uh, Greg just a few moments before he got in the boat about passing the 01 Alberto and getting around him. And he said, you know, that's going to be a tall order but if they can do that look out in the final and uh, one more note they also learned something from their great run Detroit earlier in the year they said you know that's a, it's a bigger course but we learned how to run fast on the straightaways and if you saw in that last heat they really did make up some ground and carried it into the corner all right good job Chris check out uh, the next boat inside that's the Miss Red Dot in heat 1A a second place finish yesterday but a disappointing sixth here today Chip if there's a sleeper in this field, I think this is it. This boat, I don't think, has ever looked as fast as it has this weekend. Kip Brown is quiet. He's unassuming, but I think he's getting ready now to make his mark in this heat. Polar opposite of his uncle, Nate Brown, by the way, who's not quiet and unassuming in any way, shape, or form. The next boat is the sausage boat, the old boy Alberto, a third place finish along with a first. And I got to say that, uh, Mike, I think uh, Steve David has got to be very happy about his positioning and, and this kind of draw. No question. He's coming out of the lane one position in this heat. He's got a very fast uh, lace kettle cooked out in the outside of him on, on his right. And the red dot will be in the four lane. Those are the class of this particular fleet. But the old boy Alberto handles well on the inside here. Steve David should, if he gets a good start, be able to handle this field. And Lee Stoll, you've been in the pits, the old boy Alberto team, as professional as any on the waters. And they are, and Steve, as you mentioned, he is very happy about that inside pull. The crew uh, changed out the gearbox a little bit, even after the last race, so they're still tinkering with a couple of things, just doing what they do best, needing to go faster and push harder and pull in as many points as they can to set up for that final. Mark Evans, it seems like it was just yesterday, went upside down and won the 1997 Seafair uh, Classic here. This time he's driving a boat, uh, Chip, that maybe not as fast, not as competitive as the one he was in a few years ago. And speaking of quiet and unassuming, <laughs> Mark Evans. <laughs> yes. Just kidding, folks. Um, he's trying to get this boat to Cutter. Uh, they just tell him to go out there, get as many points as he can. But Mark's a racer. I wouldn't be surprised if he saw an opening if he tried to do something with it. The U-22 Matrix boat with Mike Webster at the controls. Michael, this young man uh, still looking to try to dial in a little more speed. This is a former Cooper boat, and Cooper's not here with his Allison boat, as you know, uh, because he is uh, uh, protesting uh, the issues uh, with the officials of the sport right at the moment and dropped out of the circuit uh, after Detroit. But uh, this was a former uh, Allison-powered boat and it became a turbine, and the Matrix people have done a pristine job. They're down on a little quip and get a little help from uh, from uh, some uh, pretty good folks, however, who know what they're doing, including John Walters. So we'll see what uh, what uh, transpires here. Kim Muscatel, a broken boat, and I'm afraid a broken spirit right now. And we welcome in all the listeners on 950 KJR, as well as worldwide, CairoTV.com. Patrick. Well, a lot of people on the shore rooting for the Alberto, you know, and the boats from home of the citizens of Madison, Indiana, driven by Steve David from Florida, but it's sponsored by that great Seattle firm, the Alberto Sausage Company, and we'll see Dave can find that pepperoni power from lane one. Great hop Simmons. in lane number two is giving Steve David in lane number one a lane, and that's all. There's a zero out on the clock. Looks like a fair start. Kip Brown gets another very quick start from the middle of the field. The two leaders are back a little bit and chip they come down to you.
Kip Brown's way out there in lane four. He had a great start, but I don't think he's got enough boat. Hopefully he can salvage maybe a second or a third out of this, but it's going to be tough. Steve David takes the lead now as they come down the back shoot on lap number one, first of three times around. He's going to try to run away from everybody. In second place is Kip Brown, and he is driving well from the outside, but unfortunately there doesn't seem to be the speed this time in the U100 delays kettle cooked that they uh, demonstrated in the previous heat. Steve David is not having a problem with him. You know, speaking of cooked, I'm afraid Dave Vilwak's national championship is starting to look a little cooked because Steve David and the Alberto's gotten every break they want. They beat him one time. They have not drawn him in heat, so it's going to get tough for David to win that championship if, if Alberto keeps having a great day. Steve David turned the first lap at 140.806 miles an hour. And That's this has flying. turned out to be something of a high-speed parade for one and two at the moment, but the race for third and fourth, and there's Ken Muscatel trying desperately from the outside to get some points toward the possibility of uh, going to Cutter as he senses the problem with respect to uh, to uh, the U100 boat to Greg Hopp, and he has passed him on the outside and has taken over third place. Ken Muscatel getting a chance to score some points if he could keep it together. Meanwhile, Steve David has driven himself out of trouble. He demonstrated from the inside lane that he's got superiority here. He has been in the lead for the entire heat thus far, and it looks as though with uh, one more lap to go, he's now extended his lead to about three boat links, Pat. Well, he's up to 138 miles an hour. That The number two boat is Kip Brown. He's having a great ride. And number three is Ken Muscatel. Muscatel's boat was all beat up, Chip, before, but he's run pretty good now. Yeah, I think the problem is with Greg Hopp. Greg Hopp is going slower and slower and slower, and it's too bad because he had such a great day going, but I think he's coasting to a stop, and it's going to be all Alberto. And Kip Brown is going to help him in the final. In the race for a third and fourth, or fourth and fifth, I rather, rather, we have a pretty good race going there too. The Matrix is uh, is working on uh, Mark Evans out there. Mr. Webster trying to take him as well, so he's trying to get a little pride out here as this race continues to unfold. All right, ready to claim the checkered flag. It will be the old boy Alberto, Steve David at the wheel and uh, really never had it in this one as he passes the boat that could have given him trouble but didn't. At the start finish line, the old boy Alberto is your winner. Second place is gonna be Kip Brown in the red dot. Third place, it's gonna be the car pros scoring some points at long last for Ken Muscatel. And in fourth place, well, we're not sure yet, but it looks as though Mark Evans is gonna be able to hold on to take fourth place in the uh, Washington truck dispatch and he does that in the U57 boat, the Matrix uh, Systems, with Mike Webster bringing up the rear and Debbie in the water at the start-finish line, not completing this heat. Is Greg Hopp, that's not the way he figured it would end. Now, that's really sad because Greg Hopp and the whole uh, Leland team has done a wonderful job that found speed in the boat that they haven't found for a very long time. They just signed a new sponsor in Lay's Kettle Cooked and, and now this. If you want to give points for effort, Mike Webster, all the way out from Pennsylvania with that team and that boat, he gets up and delivers papers in the morning to have enough money to buy lunch for their crew as they work on that boat daily. So glad to have him in Seattle and participating. Congratulations to Steve and David. More points toward that national title. And it's beginning to unfold his way at the moment, and he knows that coming up in Heat 3B, it's a very busy heat for Dave Vilwak with a whole lot of competition, and Dave is going to start from the two lane uh, against uh, the Graham trucking boat, J. Michael Kelly, who will be in the one lane. So Stephen is trying to put some distance ever so slowly uh, between he and uh, Dave Vilwak toward those national points. I got to tell you, with this lane assignment, you put a quick boat like the Alberto in the inside lane, and it is so tough to overcome that advantage in only three laps. He turned that first lap at 140 miles an hour. Nobody could get him on the outside at that speed. You know, the other thing, guys, that this does is it really sets up an exciting final for today because we know Dave Villock now has to go all out here in the final to try to get some more points head to head with Steve Davis. So Chip, it's, it's really going to mean we should have one heck of a final today. Well, so far, this has been Dave Billwalk's worst nightmare. I don't think he could imagine that he would be at this stage with this many heats to go. And now this heat coming up, if Jeff Bernard, I'm sorry, if J. Michael Kelly can somehow, from the inside, beat Dave Billwalk, Oh my gosh, then we have a real barn burner coming up. But he does have Jeff Bernard also, and Jeff Bernard has been strong as well. And in addition,
addition to that, he also has to deal with the Albert Lee with Brian Perkins, who has been able to demonstrate some things we didn't expect from him. So I think that uh, walking up and down the dock right now is Dave Vilwak wondering, what did I get myself into? But looking way ahead to the final later this afternoon, you know, the Alberto is a great rough water boat. Not to take away from the U96, but it's a dandy rough water boat. If he can hang on to that number one lane position, and it looks like he'll have it in the final of the day, this is going to be a barn burner late this afternoon. It certainly is. I think what Pat is saying is that in horse racing talk, it's a mudder. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had everything but mud out here yeah. right? with the weather that we've had this weekend. And as uh, we continue to give you updated weather reports as we go along, and our Rebecca Stevenson from Cairo 7 Eyewitness News will be joining us shortly. But the, the skies are starting to lift, as she said. We are going to get a show out of the Blue Angels, and they're coming up shortly, so stand by for that. But right now, all eyes are on that boat, which is the Alberto, gliding into its finger pier. Here at Stan Sayers Pits, Steve David, the pilot. Again, another flawless job at the controls. And he is, I think we'd have to say now, he's been around a long time. This guy is a really, really fine driver. He's a fine driver, but he's a completely different driver than Dave Vilwak. This guy plays the percentages, and uh, Dave Vilwak goes for the win. And I think Lee might have him down there at the dock. Lee Stoll, take it away with Steve David. Hi, Steve. Actually, we just got you off the boat. You've got to be very excited about oh, pulling Alberto, it out. Alberto and I are exhilarated. Uh, Bart and Dorothy and the 600 employee owners of uh, Alberto, hopefully, are celebrating this day. We've done everything that we came to do, and now it's a matter of winning the final. It looks like we'll have Lane one in the final, so this could just be another Terrific birthday present for Art Alberto. Well, you couldn't ask for be anything better going into the final than lane selection. Is the inside lane the obvious choice? I believe so. You know, I've run it twice and we won both times from there, so I think it is. Chances are 96 will be next to us, and you can never take them for granted because they're an awfully fast boat. But I got a feeling the Alberto's got a couple more surprises in it for the final. You've been working on some surprises today. Well, Mike, Mike Hansen always goes into the magic box and pulls out the magic Alberto solution, so uh, we're just so happy for them and Bartels and all the other retailers that help sell Alberto products so we can go racing, so thank you to all of them as well. All right, Steve, congrats. Steve, back to you. All right, and Kip Brown is standing by with the Red Dot Boat and our Chris Francis. Yeah, Steve, I mean, this uh, crew very, very happy because they almost didn't make it out. Uh, tell me about it, Kip. It was a great run. Well, my U17 Red Dot crew has been working and working and working. Um, I screwed up last heat. I, I hooked it. Uh, after I almost blew it over down there, I did just about anything wrong you can do. And these guys saved my butt again. They uh, threw another turbine in there, and they cranked it up and gave me a hell of a boat to, to race that heat. Um, couldn't be happier for my guys. We needed the points bad. Um, if the stars align, we might make the final on points, and it didn't look like it with a second and a sixth. So, um, you know, the first heat for us was awesome. The third heat for us was awesome. If I could forget about the second one, life would be good. All right, well, take you to the final. Maybe we'll see what happens. All right, thanks, Kip. Back to you guys. Right I'm getting so All right, tired. thanks very just... much. Here are the unofficial results coming up. As you see the red dot boat dancing across the waters of Lake Washington, your unofficial results of Heat 3A for the unlimited boat, the old boy Alberto, the Miss Red Dot, Car Pros, and Ken Muscatel coming in with third place points. Then the Washington Truck Dispatch Matrix and the Lay's Kettle Cook, Greg Hopp, a DNF did not finish in that heat. That's unofficial results of unlimited Heat 3A. Now, a driver profile presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. Kent's Jeff Bernard has been racing hydroplane since he was a little kid. His first unlimited race was back in 2005 in the Chevy Cup here in Seattle. And since, he has captured three career victories, most recently last year's Thunder on the Ohio race. In 2009, the U5FormulaBoats.com finished the season third in team points, and Jeff Bernard finished second in driver points. Needless to say, with Jeff Bernard racing on home waters, the Formula Boats team certainly is in contention for this year's Albert Lee Seafair Cup. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. race of the Unlimiteds on this Seafair Sunday is Heat 3B, and here are your headlines. The Red Boats, the Formula Boats, former Budweiser Boats, they do battle out here, the U5 and U17s, and what about the sponsor's choice? Albert Lee has his name all over the Albert Lee Cup, but can his boat win it all today? And finally, 
A fourth place finish is not good enough for Dave Vilwak, the defending champ. The spirit of Cutter, how are they going to do? It's all coming up in unlimited heat, 3B. You got Graham Trucking, there's the spirit of Cutter. Miss Albert Lee Appliance Formula Boats, Miss Jillian's, and Miss Peters and May. The course, it's actually lightening up. Ceiling is lifting. That sometimes means a little more chop out on the water, so we'll get a look at that as we're about two and a half minutes away from getting this one started. And the temperature's gone up a little as the sun has started to peek through. Let us take a look at the boats and the drivers coming your way for Heat 3B, and we start with Jeff Bernard in the U5FormulaBoats.com, Mike. And he will be coming out of the four lane. He has something to prove here. He wants to run very, very strong. He will figure into whether or not the spirit of a Cutter does well in this heat. You can be sure of that. The U7 Graham trucking boat is J. Michael Kelly, and he is coming on strong, Chip. Really strong. He's got to use his head, work together with his teammate, uh, Jeff Bernard, keep Dave Billock behind him. Chris Francis, what's the feeling down there in uh, the pits? Well, racing against his teammate, but you know what? These two guys, they've uh, shown that they, they can start very well. And if J. Michael Kelly gets that good start, maybe he can hold off the uh, spirit of Cutter on the inside lane there. The U-37 boat is Bill and Jane Schumacher's. John Zimmerman at the controls, Mike. A replacement boat for a boat far superior to this one that crashed in Detroit. Young John Zimmerman is doing his best, but this boat isn't up to it. Well, how about the Albert Lee boat? We talked about it. Can the title sponsor win? And uh, can Mr. Perkins, young Mr. Perkins, Chip, drive it home to victory? Having a surprisingly good day. If they can win here, it's going to be mean even more for Albert Lee. Lee Stoll in the Albert Lee pits. How are they feeling? As you mentioned, they're the sponsor's choice. Very happy going into this after winning the Heat 2A. They've got a fast boat. Let's see if they can turn a good day into a great day based on the points. The fastest boat, though, the U96, the spirit of Cutter, and no tougher driver in this field than Dave Villon. And that boat, of course, is coming out of the number two lane, and he's got traffic, hard, hardcore traffic on both sides of this should be interesting. And finally, the Miss Jillian's boat with Cal Phipps at the controls. Not much of a chance here, I'm afraid. All right, those are the boats. 950 KJR listeners, welcome. You're listening to Cairo 7 Live coverage. CairoTV.com, World Wide Web. Hat O'Day coming your way. Bill Walk has such a piece of equipment with his propeller, with his engine, with the tradition of that former Elam, now the Spirit of Cutter team. If he can be beat, only Jeff or only J. Michael Kelly could do it in this heat. Take it away, Mike. We Simmons. shall find out, Patrick, if that is the case. J. Michael Kelly taking him to the line from the inside in that seven boat. The Graham trucking, it ticks on down, and it looks like we're going to be okay on our start. From the outside, the uh, U-37 goes across the line, sticking its nose out first. But here comes the spirit of Cutter from lane number two, Chip. I think that boat is so fast, no matter how good a start you can get on the inside, I don't think you can hold Dave off for three laps, but he's giving it everything he's got right now. And there just isn't the horsepower. Right now, Dave Vilwak is pulling him from the outside now as the spirit of cut of the U96 has about a three boat length lead, but from the inside, he's struggling to stay with him at, at this point is uh, Graham Trucking's J. Michael Kelly. They're going to be side by side off the corner now. It's going to be brute speed that's going to determine which boat is going to be able to do this. And that nod has to go to the spirit of Cutter. There it is. Oh, he gets awful loose, flies the boat quite a lot there. And they come off the corner and he uh, will lead across the uh, start finish line at the end of lap number one. 142, 568 for Bill Walk, 139 for J. Michael Kelly. He has his advantage down there in the apex of that turn chip. Right now, you're seeing mostly boat performance. I tell you, J. Michael Kelly has done a great job driving. I can't believe he's as close to him as he is. I wonder what, what that means for the final. Maybe Dave Billwalk is not as invincible as he thought. Dave Billwalk, of course, likes to fly his boat. He's getting perhaps a little more flight out of it than he perhaps liked. As they go into that corner, once again, J. Michael Kelly from the inside is going to try to keep the pressure on him. He's diving into that turn with a lot of boat speed on the inside. But once more, the spirit of Cutter comes out of the corner, and uh, Dave Vilwak is going to lead him across the line for the second time around, and he's got nearly a rooster tail, Pat. And 144 miles an hour on that second lap. Second place is J. Michael Kelly. Third place is uh, Jeff Bernard. Is Jeff teammate. Bernard, and fourth is uh, the Alfred Lee Appliance. Albert, Albert Lee Appliance, and uh, Brian Perkins trying to catch Bernard at this point. Well, now it appears the wisest thing, Chip, is to give 
Uh, Dave Vilwak the lead and don't break anything trying to catch him. And the wisest thing Dave Vilwak can do is just be smart. Sometimes he makes mistakes when he's got it right in his hand. He can't afford to do that right now. He's a little bit more conservative going into that corner, knowing that uh, at this point, J. Michael is back there quite some distance now. Comes out wide to keep his boat speed up. Gives plenty of lane uh, for that red boat in case there'd be any question about that. There has been in the past, and he'll come down to claim the checkered flag. Here comes the spirit of Cutter, winner of Heat 3B with Dave Vilwak at the wheel. Second place, J. Michael Kelly in the Graham Trucking. He's having a good day out here, letting that race come to him. Teammate Jeff Bernard, who has the superior equipment in that uh, three-boat team, finishes third, fourth overall. It's going to be Brian Perkins in the Albert Lee, and uh, it looks like the 37 boat, Peterson May, Billy Shoemaker's boat is going to uh, wind up able to finish uh, fourth overall. Uh, and, and that's uh, John Zimmerman, and he's going to be very, very happy about that finish. And Cal Phipps, unfortunately, not able to perform very well today, comes across last. You brought up a good point there, Mike. I would like maybe our own uh, pit reporter to go down there. Chris, if you could find out how do they split up that equipment between J. Michael Kelly and Jeff Bernard? Because teams have limited resources. There might be one good propeller, one good gear ratio. It'd be pretty interesting to see who gets the best equipment on that formula team. I got to tell you, Dave Vilwalk sent a message to the entire fleet on that second lap. This is rough water. He turned it at 144 miles an hour in competition water. Ooh, look out. That final heat's going to be a dandy. It sure is, and he may be further outside depending upon the uh, uh, the uh, situation. He has a choice to make here, but it certainly is going to be to the right of Stephen David in that final heat. So if he has that kind of power, he's basically telling Steve David, look, you haven't run that fast all day. I just did. You know what's going to be interesting, Mike, to see if Steve David can get boats in between him and Dave Vilwak. That would be a huge help for Alberto if he can have the inside lane, which we know he probably will. Uh, but if he can get one or two boats between him and Vilwak, that's going to be a big advantage. So everybody starts and everybody finishes. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation for Cal Phipps on uh, on this race course because Cal's a fine driver, and this boat from Detroit has been a good one. Uh, just isn't performing well today. Just not his day. Now the 37, which is called the Peters and May, that's uh, the boat run by Bill and Jane Shoemaker. They, the question might be, what is a Peters and May? Well, that is the company, they sponsor the boat, and they are the freight company that haul the boats from the United States over to Cutter and back. So if you're at home saying, what the heck is a Peters and May? A Peters and May is the freight company that will take them to that great race in the Far East. I wonder if they could arrange uh, to have Dave Vilwax maybe boat thrown off the barge <laughs> on the way to Cutter to give them an advantage. I mean, it is their, their freighter. <laughs> <laughs> There's David climbing out of the cockpit of the spirit of Cutter, greeted by crew members. Another day in the park for Dave Vilwak, who's won so many times over the course of the years, actually chasing Chip Hanauer in total wins, trailing him by a single win, and Bill Muncy, the great Bill Muncy, by two wins. It's interesting how we decided that Cutter was the right word. We spoke to Boeing, and Boeing said, when they buy airplanes from us, they call themselves Cutter. So we're going to go with Boeing. And we're going to go with Chris Francis as he steps up with Dave Vilwak, winner of Heat 3B. Yeah, Stevie, uh, just take the helmet off. And I think, uh, Dave, I think we're back where we, where we want to be, right? Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, we had to race our way in. And frankly, lane two, it looks like I'll get lane two in the final. And, you know, that's I've chosen that place more than once here. Yeah, talk about that second lap. I mean, you really blew by everybody in 144 miles an hour. Yeah, well, we knew we had to put some heat on, you know, and the crew changed everything, changed gearbox and propeller and everything. So we knew that was a big heat for us. We had to win that. So there were some adjustments made, and then and it's all working out so far. Yeah, we got, and we'll probably make more. Probably make more. See, back to work. The, the champion never sleeps, I guess, huh? <laughs> Guys, back to you. All right, thanks very much. Dave Vilwak with a little sip there. Our Lee Stoll is standing by in the pits as well, and she's waiting for Brian Perkins to come ashore from his Albert Lee boat. He's there. Here's Lee. Now we actually just kind of pulled you off the boat, Brian. A bit of a deep breath as you got to the dock from first to fourth. Any disappointment there? No, you know, not really a disappointment. We were up against a lot of fast guys, and uh, we weren't sure how that was going to play out. Uh, 
the Qatar guys, the Alberto guys, Southern guys. I mean, everybody's really fast this weekend. So lane choice is everything. Lane choice is really critical, uh, especially when it comes to getting points for the finals. So we're not disappointed, um, but we would have liked to have done better, yeah. Is it really all about getting as many points as you can getting into that final? Yeah, once you get there, it's it's okay, but you have to get there first. Um, and that's, that's the critical part. So hopefully we've acquired enough points to do that for the Albert Lee team. I think so, but we don't know for sure yet. All right, we'll see what happens, Brian. Right. Thanks so much. Back Thanks, to you, Steve. Well, we know anything can happen, but you have to get into the finals before you find that out. Here are the unofficial results. From Heat 3B of your Unlimited Racers today, presented by the Muckleshoot Casino, Spirit of Cutter wins Graham Trucking, followed by Formula Boats. There's Brian Perkins' boat, Miss Albert Lee, the Miss Peters in May, and Miss Jillian's bringing up the field. Unlimited Heat 3B. Now, a driver profile presented by 76. We're on the driver's side. They call him the world's fastest forensic psychologist. Dr. Ken Muscatel not only drives the U25 Superior Racing Hydro, he's also the boat's owner. Although Muscatel is seeking his first career victory, he's been racing for a long time. He was Rookie of the Year back in 1991. In addition to his racing experience, Muscatel has served as the American Powerboat Association Commissioner for Unlimiteds and has also been president of the Hydroplane and Raceboat Museum in Kent. On top of all of his work for the hydroplane industry, Muscatel is also a full-time forensic psychologist in his hometown, Seattle. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. We head back out to the water with the big boats, the Unlimiteds, and it's time for the wild card. And here is your only headline. Somebody out of this race is going to make it to the finals, but only one. It's the wild card next. Here are the boats, some of which are not racing anymore, but the red dot, Miss Jillian's, has dropped out. Peters and May, Washington Truck, Dispatch, Matrix, and Car Pros no longer racing in the wild card either. Taking a look at the course, the wind picking up just a little bit, as it often does down here along the shores of Lake Washington, although it shows only two miles an hour. We're getting a breeze up here. Let's take a look at the drivers. Kip Brown will be piloting the Miss Red Dot, and he's had a couple of second place finishes, Mike. But as you heard him say, Steve, if he had made a couple of mistakes, he might be a, a front runner in the final heat. He's going to have to earn the trailer position now. Chris Francis, Kip Brown is ready to make it to the finals, isn't it? Is and he actually uh, self-deprecatingly said, you know, I'm prone to mistakes, so if I don't make any and I stay inside, I'll get the job done. The Miss Jillian's boat, the U13 team, they have dropped out, and Cal Phipps is a pretty good driver. We're going to miss him in this uh, race, Chip. We are. They've had a really bad weekend. This boat usually performs much better than they have this weekend. They just couldn't find the handle this week. Can the uh, Shoemaker's boat, the U37 boat, the Peters and May, can they do what they need to do, Mike, to make it to the finals? Well, they've been consistent, but they haven't been real, real fast. They've been finishing, and young John Zimmerman's doing a good job with that boat, but he certainly gives up some horsepower to a couple of the others in this heat. Our old buddy Mark Evans in the U57 boat. Chip, can he come back, and can he win another one at Seattle? Well, I would ordinarily say he doesn't have a chance, but they've got Mr. Excitement in the seat there, and when you got Mr. Excitement Mark Evans in there, you never know what he can come up with. And finally, the Matrix System boat, Mike Weber. Michael? He's uh, given a good account of himself. He's uh, down on equipment, doesn't have quite the, uh, uh, the the resources that some of the other teams have, Steve, but the reality is, is that he's improving little by little by little, and uh, this might be yet another step in that direction. Still trying to get one of the boats. That's the Matrix boat. Get it fired yeah. up down there on the water. Let's that head down to good. Lee Stoll right now in the Ken Muscatel pits, and they really are unhappy that they can't run in this race, Lee. I think because, you know, Ken was so instrumental in getting that race in the Middle East, the fact that he can't go and race is horribly disappointing to him. It really was Ken that put that, that race on the map. And they really did work hard to get that boat put pack together. As we're looking now, just about a minute to go in this wild card heat. So that shows me then one, two, three, four boats are up. And right now we're still waiting for the Matrix. So right now only three boats out on the water, but somebody 
will go to the finals. Patrick? Well, I kind of hope in a sense that a boat where the owner of the boat puts every dollar he earns into that boat to keep it competitive and to keep it running, that's Nate Brown, a former driver here on the course. And uh, with Kip Brown driving it, that crossed my fingers. He needs to win something out here today. So for you, Nate Brown, we're rooting for you. All right, Patrick and uh, Nate Brown's uh, team is going to have the inside. Uh, his uh, nephew, uh, Kip, is going to drive that boat from lane number one. In the number two lane, it's going to be the Peters and May. In the number three outside, it's going to be the Washington Truck Dispatch with Mark Evans. Those are the only three starters. The Matrix, unfortunately, did not make it into this heat, could not leave the dock. And that has to be a great disappointment for those folks from Pennsylvania. Down to the line, they're coming now with four or three, a little bit early. Have to back off just a tad to avoid a jump. Don't don't look like we're going to have any kind of a jump at all as we go across the line. And from the inside, the advantage, of course, is going to be the uh, red dot boat. But what a nice turn by John Zimmerman there in that three lane chip. He's handling it very nicely. And I'm afraid Mr. Brown made a mistake. He was a little early, as you said, coming to the line, so we had to back off. They gave the two boats on the outside the jump and took up the power of the red dot. I think he'll just take care of business now. That's exactly right. Although I tell you what, Zimmerman is looking as fast as we've seen him all weekend right now. The red dot qualified in the middle 140s and Zimmerman barely was able to get past uh, 135 to qualify with uh, that uh, Peterson May. But Billy Shoemaker is an old codger who knows what he's doing at a boat race. And so his team has done very, very well. Pat, he's putting a good show on there. We have that racing that we love to see here on the lake. They're side by side. The rooster tails are kicking up and they turn the first lap at 138 miles an hour. That's about as fast as the Peters and May has gone all weekend here. So that is a, a, an excellent adjustment or two they made on that boat. And it looks as though Kip Brown's having a little problem catching him. I'm, I'm dumbfounded, actually. This boat has not performed really for two weeks that I've seen it. This performance is unbelievable. The red dot looked very, very good all day long i thought they might even be a contender but look at the peters and may it's unbelievable from the outside nevertheless and this is a borrowed leland boat their best boat of course destroyed in that gold cup crash with the seawall uh back in detroit a few weeks back and john zimmerman just a replacement driver because uh J.W. Myers, their regular driver, was injured in that uh, accident and is not going to be racing the remainder of the season, perhaps at Doha. But at the end of lap number two, it again is the Peterson May, and they've got something to cheer about because he's got a whole rooster tail lead now on Kip Brown. Chip, he's got it under control. Going back, I know I've been pounding hard on the start and how important that is, and I think what you're seeing is a guy that got a great start versus a guy who had the inside but was early, had to back out, out of the throttle. Zimmerman had a ton of momentum and I think he's going to find himself in the final although in the back of the lead the, the, the first group well over in Tri-Cities two weeks ago Zimmerman found his way into the final and nobody would have believed that was possible the way things had gone for them over there in the uh, in the sunshine of uh, Pasco Kennewick Richland and now coming off the exit pin and uh, eyeing his first checkered flag on Lake Washington here comes John Zimmerman in the Peters and May and he will win this wild card he and uh, goes on into the final. Oh, that's great that uh, Billy Shoemaker gets something out of today. His boat wins the provisional. Yeah, Billy and Jane have worked hard to keep this thing going, this this whole team going. They've been a, uh, he, he's been a real ram charger with this uh, Peterson May team. And they've had a, a, a great deal of luck out here. They've been a winner in the past, but this has been uh, their worst luck, so to speak. But uh, something to now smile about is John Zimmerman brings their boat home a winner in this uh, wild card uh, heat. And that was and, an awfully good show. And a tip of the hat to the Schumachers. The easiest thing for them to have done when their boat hit the seawall in Detroit, broke every bone in their driver's foot, would have been to say, that's it, we've had it. But they didn't. They leased a the boat. They worked really hard. Their crew worked hard. It's not the best of equipment for them to come out here and do this. I'm very, very proud and happy for them. And Chip, those were decent speeds, 138, 137, and 138 miles an hour. That's decent on any competition water. You got it exactly right, Pat. And so the Peters and May, that uh, brilliant uh, lime green and blue color, 
And quite a combination there. And as Pat was mentioning, those are the folks who transport these boats across the ocean. And we'll do that uh, to take the uh, top 10 of these unlimited hydroplanes off to uh, Doha, Qatar, or Qatar rather, in, the, in uh, the month of November. And this is another example how important that Middle East race is because I think the Schumachers would have would have walked away if it wasn't for the Middle East. But they said, look, we, we have a good amount of points, even though our boat's damaged. Let's put a boat together. Let's see if we can just hang on to get to the Middle East, get that big payday. You know who's probably cheering the loudest right now for this team is J.W. Myers, whose foot was just shattered, and uh, he's watching all this. I mean, I know he wants to be back in the boat, but he's got to yeah. be cheering John Zimmerman on. He's cheering him on. There's no question he's cheering him on, but it's so painful. It yeah. is a little bit like watching your brother go out with your date, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's his, this was his team. He was so, I, I know J.W. He was so excited, and it's really hard to watch somebody take your girl to the prom. Hmm. Or your brother. Well, that would be really weird, wouldn't yeah. it? Well, it would be, actually. Hey. Gee, you made me just change my whole train of thinking there, uh, <laughs> Chip. But, but thanks for that. Well, there, there he is right there, John Zimmerman, who, who by the way, is a champion driver in his own right. You Mike, bet. he's been uh, in a lot of classes. He's a world record holder. This guy is good behind the wheel. Oh, that's why they picked him. This is a, this is a, a fellow who's got a, a, a veteran career behind him already and stepped up to the Unlimiteds earlier this year. He had a couple of uh, heats in Unlimiteds before he joined the Schumacher team. And uh, frankly, this got to excite him a lot to win on Lake Washington because he, like so many other drivers in this part of the of the country, have often uh, thought of it. what would we like to get a checkered flag at Seafair. He is just about ready as he takes the helmet off to jump up on the finger pier there, and he's going to be greeted by, well, yes, kisses all around, but Lee Stoll is going to jump in and chat with him as well in just a couple of seconds as he's kind of getting all of the gear off. Chip? You know what's interesting is here is a team ecstatic that they're, you know, won the provisional. Now, this is a team, remember, that, that beat Dave Vilwak and the powerful Elam team and won the whole thing. Look at now they're ecstatic that they won the, you know, the wild card. So quite a change for yep. this team. Lee Stoll is set. Let's go down to her. John, this could have been a championship race considering what your crew is looking like right now. Just ecstatic on the on the dock here. This is the first time I've ever won a heat of racing. Um, we came here with, a very, with an underdog boat. We didn't know what our chances were, and we did the best we could expect. What went so right? The crew. The crew is wonderful. They work hard, and they never give up. And I think one of your biggest fans right now is probably J.W. What do you think he thinks of this? I'm sure J.W. loves it. And I'd really like to thank Ex Officio and Peters and May and the United States Marine Corps for sponsoring this boat and making it happen. And John Schumacher, you're the owner. You, this team has been through so much over the past couple of weeks. What does it feel like to see them at this end of it? It's really wonderful to see John pull out in front like that. It's uh, John did a fabulous job driving the boat. And I'm, I'm happy for Peters and May. At least we got into the final heat. And at the beginning of the weekend, I just didn't think it would happen. But congratulations, John. And I'm calling you John because I'm just so used to the name now. But really congratulations for your team. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, back to you. All right, Lee. Thanks very much. Let's head over to uh, Chris Francis on the other side of the pitch, maybe a little less ecstatic uh, in the uh, red dot uh, camp. Chris? Yeah, I think so, Steve. It's one of those things where anything can happen. And uh, disappointed Kip Brown here just taking to that start a little bit. Uh, had to back off a little, I guess. Well, I, I didn't want to jump. And, uh, you know, I... I, I set myself up in an improper fashion, and, and kudos to the U37 guys at Miss Peters and May, and John Zimmerman. I mean, a rookie, and he's in his final, and uh, and I'm proud of them. He's a friend of mine, and uh, I, I hate it for my guys because they've worked their butts off all day, and I let them down, and uh, that's really, really unfortunate. Uh, to be totally honest with you, I counted my chickens before they hatched. Uh, I, I really felt like we had this thing in the bag and that I could be a little bit conservative and still drive around those guys, and boy, I was wrong. And uh, I apologize to my team and the Red Dot Corporation uh, for you know not getting them the, dis the exposure that they deserve. Uh, no, humble Kip Brown, and uh, back up to you guys, uh, he's disappointed. Well, it sounds like it. you don't hear drivers uh, apologizing like that very often. Here are the unofficial results. The Miss Peters and May, the Red Dot, and then uh, Mark Evans' boat, the Washington Truck Dispatch, and the other threes did not start. That is your wild card unlimited results now a driver profile presented by 76 we're on the driver's side racing in his 22nd season is oh boy oberto miss madison driver steve david 
A senior veteran with 11 unlimited victories, David has driven for the Madison team since 2001. David has captured the National High Point Driver Championship four out of the last five years. Steve David is also a newly inducted member of the American Powerboat Association Hall of Champions. During the offseason, Steve David is a realtor in Florida who also teaches college courses in real estate. Driver Profile is presented by 76. Bring your 76 gas receipt to their tent at Seafair and get a free gift. Now let's talk about the unlimited boats because we've got that championship race coming up here just a little bit later as well. And we're talking Steve David. We're talking uh, certainly uh, Dave J. Michael Kelly. J. Michael Kelly. There's, there's a whole list of uh, suspects, if you will, here that perhaps can win this race. Yeah, and I think based on what happened in that second heat, this final could be way different than we thought coming into today. I think we thought it was going to for sure be a two-boat race. Steve David has flipped things on its head by nobody thought he was going to do well enough to get the inside. Steve David will be going into the final today on the inside lane. That's bad news for Dave Vilwalk. Dave Vilwalk's going to have to have a lot of speed at the line, and he's going to not have, he can't make mistakes. I think he's got enough boat to overpower Steve David from the outside. He did it last uh, last week in Tri Cities, uh, but J. Michael Kelly, um, a number of them, I think, could if they're slow at the start. The other guys are slow at the start. Could still win this race. So it's going to be an exciting final. Well, let's hear from Dave Vilwalk right now as they get set, as his team is preparing his boat. Let's head down to the pits and Chris Francis. Steve, I heard all of that analysis from Chip, and I'm with Dave Vilwalk, and uh, it's uh, the end, close to the end of a long day. Uh, I know you're excited to get going. What about running outside? side of Steve David. I don't know. What did Chip say? <laughs> Chip said you can't make mistakes and it's going to be tough to catch him. Uh, well, as Chip knows, I've won here from lane two a number of times. So we're just going to make another good start and run it up there as hard as we possibly can and see if we can get this cutter boat out front. I think a lot of us were surprised by the fact that there are so many others that were winning heats and just running very competitively. It, did, it wasn't a two horse race all, all weekend here. Yeah, well, the boats are all competitive and with, you know, the lane lane deals and people being able to run inside and outside. People are learning how to do that better and better, and so it's been a good show. I mentioned when you came out uh, the last heat, you were going to make some even more adjustments. I'm sure you did. What what, what we were looking at there? Yeah, change the motor, change propeller. You know, so you know, let's take a got our biggest heaviest bat. We're going to go out and swing as hard as we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Defending champ with the biggest bat he can swing. Back to you guys. Time to decide the champion. The Albert Lee Cup Championship heat here at Seafair, and here are your headlines. For the Old Boy Alberta team, their game plan has worked so far. One more race to go. But standing in the way, the spirit of Cutter, the U96 team of Dave Vilwak. And what about that Graham trucking boat? Will they sneak up on everybody? Watch out. The championship for the Albert Lee Cup is right now. And for the final time today, your muckle shoot lineup card starts with the Old Boy Alberto team and Steve David on the inside. FormulaBoats.com, then Graham Trucking, Miss Albert Lee Appliance, Spirit of Cutter, Lay's Kettle Cooked, and the Miss Peters and May. Just about four minutes before we go racing, the boats are out. They're getting set. The sun is peeking through, but the rollers on Lake Washington, we've come to know and love, are out there as well as we take a look at the men who will be driving these Thunderboats into this Albert Lee Championship race. And here we go, starting with Steve David, who has had it all his way this weekend for the most part, Mike. Now comes the real question, though. Can he do it from the inside? Has he got enough uh, horsepower, enough brute boat speed to outrun the Qatar? That's the question. Lee Stoll, Steve David is about the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet, but he's right now chomping at the bit, isn't he? Oh, he really is, but you're right. He's ready to get out there, and they're looking for that perfect con but combo, a perfect start, that inside lane, that should do it for them. The U5 Formula Boats team with Jeff Bernard at the controls, a second and a third, the best he's done this weekend, Chip. 
Jeff Bernard is a great talent. He comes from a long lineage of bow racers. He's extremely aggressive. He reminds me a lot of his stepfather, Terry Troxel. When it comes to the final heat, there's no stopping him. The Graham Trucking Boat has J. Michael Kelly at the controls. Mike Fitzsimmons, this was your pick for the weekend championship win. And still is, depending upon how things unfold, obviously, he'll be in the three lane. I think he likes it there. We'll have to determine whether or not he has the right kind of bullet and combination, though, to run with these other guys, because he's going to have to be super fast this time. Can the overall sponsor of Seafair this year, Albert Lee, can their boat with Brian Perkins at the controls win? He does have a first place finish uh, in the heat races, Chip. This week has been up and down for poor Brian. He's won a heat. He's been disqualified. He's had lots of problems. What he told me he's going to do in the final heat is just find smooth water and keep the momentum up. It could be enough. Dave Vilwonk, you can never count him out, the defending champion here at Seafair, Mike. He says he's comfortable with that two lane, reminds everybody he's won here plenty of times from there, but he hasn't had to get around a boat as fast as Oberto. Let's see if it happens this time. Chris Francis, this guy drives angry a little bit sometimes, and he wants to win. Well, I spoke to his crew chief, Eric Elstrom, just walked by me on the dock here. He said, I said, do you have enough? And he just gave me a determined nod, just one nod. They're very quiet, confident around here. Gonna be some kind of race. Here's the Lays kettle cooked team. U100, the Leland team with Greg Hopp at the controls, Jim. I think these guys were headed for a great weekend and maybe a chance to win, but they were uh, they had an engine failure in one of the preliminary heats. That means they're gonna be pretty far outside. I don't think they can win from out there. And finally, Mike's tough for a trailer to win, but it's happened before. The Peters and May team with John Zimmerman. Very lucky to be in this uh, final, but he earned it. Uh, unfortunately, however, now he's outclassed rather significantly. So those are the boats in the race. We want to welcome in all those listeners on 950 KJR and worldwide on Cairo.com. Welcome to all of you on the web. It is now time to turn it over for this 60th regatta at Seafair to the man who's been to just about all these races, our own Pat O'Day. Well, if we can look just under the surface of the water, the sockeye salmon are swimming resolutely south to spawn in those sparkling waters of the Cedar River. They look up, six green crawlers ripping the surface of the lake, and they say, what the hell's going on? <laughs> and we say, welcome home, sockeyes. You've had a long swim out there in the Pacific, but you've made it. You're just in time for the final heat of the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair. Thank you, Patrick. From the inside, oh boy, oh bird, Spirit of Cutter, Graham Trucking, Albert Lee, Formula Boats, Delays Kettle Cooked, and the trailer, the U-37, Peters and May. Here they come to the line. A little bit fast, a little bit early. Could be a bit of a problem. Oh, that was a shaver. At, across the line, though, if it was a good start, the Graham Trucking had a perfect start. They come zipping down into that lower corner. And Chip, you've got them. Graham trucking with J. Michael Kelly once again shows what a great talent he is as a driver, but look at Oberto. Dave Billock is going to have to use all the power that boat has, and he I, looks to me like, oh boy, Oberto might be stretching it out. Those parallel rollers are tough on all of those boats up the back chute, but the oh boy, Oberto has got the lead now on the outside. There you see the spirit of Cutter just leaping over those high rollers at the apex of that corner, trying somehow or other to catch the oh boy, Oberto. It's going to be uh, a closer race uh, than I thought it would be at the start finish line, but the uh, cutter is starting to move up now, and I'd say about two boat lengths, Pat, is all that separates them. 144.633 miles an hour in the first lap. Into the corner, the cutter looks a bit ragged as it oh, comes awfully close to the old boy, Oberto. That really is going to help. They lost a lot of momentum there. This is a race of momentum. These boats weigh 6,000 pounds. If you slow them down, it's hard to get them going again. Dave, I think, made a mistake trying to pinch the Alberto in tight. He hit some bad water, but that boat is so fast, he's right back at him again. He is indeed right back at him, but this time he uh, is going to be, whoa, he's really leaping. He's having to work awfully hard on the outside there, and that water is rough up in the north turn. As they come around the corner, the old boy, Alberto, has a bit more of a lead at the end of the second lap than he did at the end of the first. But here comes uh, Dave Vilwak. His bow is as high as it could possibly be without blowing over as they come across the line. 142, 848, the second lap. Great speed. Down it, in that lower corner, you got him, Chip. 
This is going to be really disappointing for Dave. I think he really thought that he had the boat speed to do it from the outside. He may very well have that boat speed, but right now I think he, he's in big trouble. And remember, we're going five times around, and we've just finished two and a half of those times, so this is a lot of racing left to go. Right now, oh boy, Alberto has things going its way. Steve David out front, but once again, up there in that upper corner, carrying a lot of boat speed through that turn. It is Dave Vilwak in the spirit of Cutter, but he is further behind this time. He has lost ground to the oh boy, Alberto on this third lap, and Steve David knows it. The radio man telling him this time he's making his charge, but he's coming from greater distance behind. Alberto is still in the lead at the end of three. But let's go back to that second heat when Alberto beat that gave him the inside lane that's made all the difference there's no question that uh, the cutter boat is faster but Dave just can't get at him to go by him on that last lap uh, the cutter was a mile an hour faster than the Alberto making up a little bit of space Alberto will 141 and the cutter at 142 Steve David has got some terrific speed up that back chute and uh, it appears that Dave Vilwak is doing everything but keeping right side up practically to try to catch him and it's going to be very very difficult for him to do it we're coming down to end lap number four Steve David still has the lead but Dave Vilwak is not going to let go not at all here he comes on the outside by about two-thirds of a rooster tail, the old boy Alberto goes across the line one more time around now for the two leaders. 143 uh, miles an hour to 140 for Vilwalk on that one, and this is it. I tell you what, this is one heck of a boat race. Both of them have got to find smooth water. They're searching for smooth water to keep that propeller hooked up. It's going to be very close, my friends, very, very close. Peters and May get wide to the outside to get out of the way as they come. This time, Dave is making his move. This is his last opportunity. He lost the Columbia Cup in this corner. He's going to try to win the Albert Lee Cup in this upper corner on the last time around. And now here we have Steve David out in the lead, and it does not look like there's going to be sufficient time for the Qatar to catch up. He's trying, but it's going to be the old boy, Alberto, wins the Albert Lee Cup it's at Fair. Holy smokes, what a race that was. Well, I have great admiration for both drivers. Uh, you know, that second heat was everything. That gave Steve David that inside lane. That's what won him the race. Listen to these speeds in the final lap of the race. It was the Alberto with 144.311 and the Spirit of Cutter 144.459. It was just an eyelash between them. What a battle. What a final heat of the Alfred Lee Cup. Absolutely. Everybody was getting loose, but I got to tell you, the Spirit of Cutter was really getting loose. Yeah. I mean, David had it out on the ragged edge trying to get the Alberto. That was a great driving job by Dave Vilwak. He did everything he could do. He really, really pushed that boat. There's nothing more he could do. He swung everything he had at him. Uh, it just from the outside, uh, he couldn't do it. I think he made one mistake when he tried to pinch him in there tight. I think it was the first corner of the second lap. It didn't work for him. He lost a bunch of momentum. I think if he would have maintained his momentum through that corner, just ignored Steve, he probably would have won this race. Can anybody question that the city of Madison, Indiana, that a crew chief named Mike Hansen, that a driver named Steve David, and an owner named Bob Hughes, and a sponsor named Alberto has their act together? It's it's really going to be an emotional doc. Um, you know, I think Art's you know had some health problems. He's getting older. Winning in Seattle for the Alberto family. Come on, it just doesn't get any better than that. And uh, you, this is what they live for this all year. This is their Christmas. This means a lot to this family. And of course, it's locked up another championship for Steve David. Should this pretty much this standing the way it is, and we've had no indication that there are any penalties whatsoever. Just good clean hard racing deck to deck we love to see it i think that's about as good a race as, as you're going to see because it ebbed and flowed there was a couple times i thought dave was just going to blow by him but it came right down to that last corner and if steve david would have made one little mistake bill walk could have went by him and i think this is probably wow. can't tell which corner it is but Dave Vilwak is really trying hard, and that's all you want from your driver. You Chip, want him to throw everything he can, and he did. Well, he Chip, always we were does. so busy, we forgot to tell you that J. Michael Kelly finished third. <laughs> there was so much excitement right. with those 
first two battling the number four boat was Jeff Bernard. And I'm gonna get on J. Michael Kelly's soapbox again. I think he made a brilliant start. He did a great job. He just didn't have the boat, but I think if I were to give an award for the best driver of the Unlimited for this day, I think it would have to go to J. Yeah, Michael um, Kelly. Un unfortunately, guys, it isn't quite as good as it, if you, as you make it sound. It was a one lap penalty on the seven boat and uh, J. Michael uh, got over the line too quick. As uh, I told you, he was right there. Yeah. It could have been perfect, but it wasn't. And uh, I think that's why he backed away, uh, frankly, but, because but, he realized that he was across the line. But I it. never fault a driver in a final key to push the start line that hard, especially when he has inferior equipment because he's got to give everything he can. Well, there is Dave Villock, who, as you said, Chip, did everything a driver can do to try to win that race from being out there where he was to fight his way back up to that deck to deck position in competing with Steve David for the championship here at Seafair, the Albert Lee Cup. But you know Dave Villock as well as anybody, and he's got to be a little disappointed in not being able to win this race. But let's find out from him. Here's Chris Francis. Yeah, we are with Dave Billwalk, a uh, celebration over on the other dock, but uh, Dave, it was just that inside lane. You, you tried to get to him a couple times and just couldn't do it. Yeah, I got across the start first and got into the corner, but, you know, I just he got a fender on me, and then he moved out a couple of times. I had to drive around that, so just got no me worries, a little Dave. bit. Way to go. Anyway. Congratulations from crew chief Eric Elsham. Tell, yeah. tell me about that second corner here in the second lap when you almost had him. You almost, you almost overtook him there. Yeah, I just uh, I got around him a little bit, but it's just you know hit a couple other waves and got into somebody else's some of the lap traffic and we couldn't finish it off. All right, All right Dave. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Yeah, yep. pretty did a good job. Yep. Thanks to Seafair. Everybody had a great time. Defending champ, uh, gracious in defeat here, second place at Seafair. Back to you, Steve. Chris, thanks very much. Meantime, on the dock, very close by. Steve David has climbed out of the boat and accepting the congratulations of his team, and he is with our Lee Stoll. All right, Steve, a quick hug and a quick kiss from your wife. Very important, of course. When did you know this was going so well for you? Perfect start and inside lane. Perfect start, and I came out in the lead, and I just knew it was going to get better from that, and I'm so thankful to the Alberto people for sponsoring us, my wife, to allow me to do this because I know it's a nervous thing for her, but she knows it's our passion to uh, all the good folks at Bartels and all of our other retailers that sell Alberto products. It, uh, it takes money, obviously, to run this thing, but it takes one heck of a team, too. And Mike Hansen is my crew chief and all of these crew members. They really got focused Saturday morning, and we had a race boat. I told you we were saving some for the final, but running against a guitar boat, they're an outstanding boat. He made me drive the race of my life. And it looked like you kept pushing him on the corners. You were pushing him out. When did you know that you had Dave? Um, it really when I came out um, of the first turn, I thought this is going to be a very close race. Um, he got within striking distance, but we had the inside advantage, and I simply wasn't going to back out of it. I was either going to crash or win. You left everything out there then? Oh, I did. Yeah, I think we left some boat pieces out there too, <laughs> but that's okay. We got more Alberta boat pieces. All the important parts came back. They should, Well, yeah, and I'm back with my wife and my team, and so, yeah. you know, God is uh, awfully graceful. All right, Sabrina, congratulations to you Thank too. You. Steve, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody on Cairo too for watching all day and supporting the advertisers. Thank you. Back to you. So he's, like he's a true champion. Push. He's, <laughs> he's flat tired. <laughs> that was a real workout oh, for him. I was going to say, a race like that is exhausting. And Steve is in great shape, but he is 60 years yeah. old. You know, so <laughs> when you saw a great driving out. performance by a 60-year-old guy. Well, let's check in with uh, one of the young guys out there who very, very nearly had the start of his life, unfortunately for him just maybe a split second too soon. Chris uh, Francis is with J. Michael Kelly. Yeah, boy, a quick start, J. Michael. Uh, those two guys are battling it out. I mean, just tell me what it was like. Oh, I mean, it was rougher than snot out there. Um, you know, I, I guess I jumped the gun, but uh, I don't know. Um, I thought it was good. Uh, you know, I knew I had to be on there and push it, you know, with Steve David and uh, Dave Illock on my inside. Uh, you know, the Graham trucking boat's been uh, pretty, uh, Reliable this weekend, uh, all seconds, and uh, we just put it out there and uh, had a good boat ride. And uh, you know, it's part of the game, though. Sometimes you're a little too early, and uh, that's just how it works out. All right, thanks for joining us, Jay Michael. Yep. Rufford and Snot, Steve. Rufford and Snot. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've heard that very. Yeah. Chip, you've driven a long time. Is that one of those uh, colloquial terms? Um, okay, I'll go okay. with it. If he says it was rougher than Snot, I'll accept that. <laughs> Uh, you know, what I was going to say is that's what you want from a driver that doesn't have quite the 
equipment, you want him to push the line because there's no way he's going to win unless he pulls off a perfect start. So if I were his owner, I would not be disappointed with that jump. Oh, not at all. at all. Give him another 10 miles an hour, and he's seeing a lot of checkered flags. Yep. Mike, one thing we noticed when we're watching that championship heat, I mean, we've talked about Steve, uh, or make that uh, Dave Vilwak charging hard and closing that gap, but Steve David never let him get around. Steve, Rabel, uh, Steve David had to keep his foot in it, too. Yeah, he certainly did have to keep his foot in it. And uh, although the better boat ride obviously was the old boy Alberto uh, when uh, when uh, Dave Villock was trying to catch him. I mean, he really had to risk it to try to get around him. And uh, he just simply was getting too wild to do that safely. And I think that uh, that uh, he kept the, the throttle down. But the reality of it is, is that that boat was uh, getting a little squirrely on him. And he probably would have uh, been risking a whole lot more if he'd have gone any faster. If boat on the inside actually he is a little more stable because it's turning a tighter arc so the skid fin is holding the bow down a little bit the guy on the outside doesn't have as much yaw or the boat isn't rotated as much yep. so he gets more air under it so the guy on the outside has a much much scarier ride than the guy on the inside but i agree with steve this was a momentum race neither one of them when they look at the computer i'll bet ever backed off once no if, they didn't if either one of them would have backed off for just a millisecond the other guy would have been gone Chip their speeds were so interesting. Uh, you had three laps that were at over 144 miles an hour for the Alberto, and the last lap of the heat was the fastest lap of the heat. That tells you that that's competitive racing. Oh, Dave kept the pressure on the whole way. Yeah, he, he never, ever, ever gave any ground. Uh, if he could have caught him, he would have, and it looked for a moment there like he might have. They came awful close to in lap two down in that lower corner, but uh, as you uh, observed, Chip, that was a situation where Dave kind of lost his boat for a moment, and that may very well have taken away his last real good opportunity. Yeah, maybe if we get a chance, we can look at that uh, that corner on uh, where Dave tried to go, and he did the right thing. It's not a wrong thing. He see how he goes over real tight right there. He tried to squeeze him, but it put him right into this rough water there. See all the momentum now he's going to lose. The, uh, the skid fin unhooked. He went wide. I think that was the boat race right there. If Dave had not tried to move in tight and just ran his own arc, he would have won this boat race. And, you know, Chip, you, uh, Vilwak said that David moved out on him a little bit in that corner. And if you look back at that film from the helicopter, there's some evidence that that might have been the case. I don't think so. I think that was Dave. If, you, if we look at it again, I think it would be good to look at it again because Dave made that accusation. And what we'll look at is... Did Steve David move away from the buoy? I don't think so. I think he stayed by the buoy, but Dave tried to cinch it up on him. I'll have to look at it again to be sure. All right, guys, let's take a look at the unofficial results now, but they seem pretty official to us, and what a boat race it was with Steve David winning for his second time here in Seattle in the Old Boy Alberto with Dave Vilwak, the defending champ in second place, Miss Albert Lee Appliance, followed by Formula Boats, the Miss Peters and May, the Graham Trucking Boat, and the Lay's Kettle Cook bringing up the rear. What a great race it was, the championship of the Albert Lee Cup. Congratulations to Steve David and the old boy, Oberto, the Geico photo finish winner of the Albert Lee Cup at Seafair. And remember, your search for the best car insurance isn't over until you check out Geico at geico.com. Well, what a wonderful day it has been. Yes, cloudy, maybe a little bit chilly, but the sun came out just in time for us to have one heck of an Albert Lee Cup championship race with Steve David winning in the Oh Boy Alberto and winning for Art Alberto. What a nice, what a nice thing that was to see those two hug. You know, that Alberto family had a house right here by I-90. I don't think they have it any longer, but bow racing and seafair has been part of their family forever. So for him to win in Seattle, I think makes us all very proud. A final thought from our start-finish line crew, two of the grand young men of this sport, Mike Fitzsimmons and Pat O'Day. That was a fine final. That was as good a, a, a boat racing as you've ever seen on Lake Washington. Oh, it was great. Uh, other than the absence of the sunshine today, a perfect day. Great boat racing. No one was injured. It was just sensational. A great, a great 60th birthday for unlimited hydroplane racing here on the lake. Right, Mike? And, of course, those of us from eastern Washington, thanks for keeping the A.C. on this weekend. <laughs> Congratulations, and Mike, 40 years. Let's do it again, shall we? All right. This time next year. Chip Hanauer, you're the best, my friend. Well, thank you. I can't tell you how much I enjoy this. Uh, this is my new race team after all these years, and I enjoy this every bit as much as I enjoy driving a race boat. 
And let us thank to all the people that you see on the screen right now, because this is our team. Without them, we could not do what we do to bring you eight hours plus of live coverage here on Cairo 7 every Seafair Sunday. It was great racing, and when it came down to the championships, we crowned two new ones this year. Paul Becker wins in the Unlimited Lights, and Steve David returns to the winner's platform in the Albert Lee Cup championship race here at Seafair. For all of us, thanks to our pit crews as well, our pit reporters, and all our news reporters, I'm Steve Rabel. Thanks for being with us here on Cairo 7.